Brother G. Yo, what's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's good, bro? I'm just sitting here stuffing my face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do what you do. What's up, man? Shoot, I finally, finally get, finally get, finally get my, my daggone fellow army dog online. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> hey, you know how, you know how it go, and you know, you know, sun's out, guns out, right? Yeah. But, uh, Man, whenever you re- hey, don't worry about hey, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. <laughs> hey, well, uh, we all let me see, let me switch over to the YouTube side. Uh ooh, there we go. All right, y'all. Hey, put a one in the put a one in the chat if you can hear us. Put a one in the chat if you can hear us. As soon as I get some ones, we can go ahead and roll. That what you call it latency, YouTube's latency. They go, okay, Zach. Zach is the main one that's gonna be peppering you with a bunch of questions because he be asking me, and I'm like, dude, I don't know. Hey, what's up? Keep it techie. Uh I'll be like, man, I don't know. Y'all gotta hold on a second since he uh here, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, waiting on this thing. Come on, can you go a little? Can you go a little faster? Uh, uh, okay, Josh. I didn't know if you was gonna be around, but I sent it anyway. Hey, so go ahead, G. Uh, go ahead and tell the folks who you are and what you do and what you're all about and give give us everything about you. All right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Some of y'all know me as G Dizzle, but I got another channel called Tech G where I talk about entry-level IT stuff. And my background is Forgive me, I was just finishing up my dinner over here. Oh man, we we are we are we are unorthodox over here, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my background is as follows. So um I actually got introduced to IT probably in nineteen ninety-eight or ninety-nine when I was a freshman or sophomore at Tuskegee University. So I took this class, um, just some programming class. I want to say C at the time, but I ended up failing the class because I was just all kind of lost to confuse. And then I was just kind of focused on some of the honeys that was in the class. So I really wasn't paying attention <laughs> like I should. And, um, Distracted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but overall, you know, I've been in STEM in general since like 98 because I went to college to be an aerospace engineering student where I thought I was going to design, you know, grow up to work for NASA, designing spaceships and rockets and all that stuff. But um, anyways, fast forward, uh, went into the military and, um, you know, just it was something I always wanted to do, um, you know, between my first college class taking IT stuff and me going to the military. I didn't do anything with uh, IT. Like I said, I had dropped that class and just totally forgot about IT. But anyways, I go into the military. In two, and um. I was I wanted to join the I wanted to join the infantry, but my uncle, he was in the army at the time, and he convinced me not to join the infantry, and uh, you know pick a MOS that would have, you know, a, a high employability status after the uh, the military. So my initial MOS, military occupational specialty, I was called it was called a thirty one Papa. I think it's like twenty five Papa now, but it was a microwave systems operator. And wow. That job, okay. And, you know, for those of you who are, who are unfamiliar, it's not the microwave that you warm your food up with. No, uh, no, <laughs> it's to- totally different. Yeah. I dealt with uh, basically what they call tropo signals, where we would bounce line of sight signals. We would bounce signals off the atmosphere to establish communication. So I was one of the guys that was responsible for, you know, doing all that stuff. Right. Um, after about two years of doing that, I got an opportunity or three years of doing that. I got an opportunity to reclass to. uh Become a 25 Bravo or 74 Bravo back then. That's the computer specialist. And so I ended up reclassing. And um, 
you know, from there, that's when I actually got my official kickoff into IT was probably like 2005. So, you know, I did the uh, entry level stuff, um, the grunt work, I like to say, running around, plugging in network cables, creating user accounts, resetting passwords. I did all that. I was a system administrator at one point in my career. At one point, I used to work for the NSA when I was in the military doing some some secret squirrel stuff over there with their uh, communication systems where I was uh, in charge of, uh, I want to say, a quote unquote data center to a certain extent that was worth a few hundred million dollars. That was like on the opposite side of my office that I was in charge of making sure that all the circuits stayed green and you know nothing dropped because where I worked at for the NSA, uh, you know, without going into too too extreme detail, because I probably st I probably still can't really talk about it. But yeah, the, uh, the stuff that, that they have, they stuff the the type of equipment that they have in there is capable of uh, listening in on cell phone calls halfway around the world. And so I was in charge of a lot of that circuitry to make sure that it you know all the lights stayed green and none of that stuff went down. And then we dealt with some other stuff. Um, when I was in Afghanistan back in two thousand ten. I was a service desk supervisor where I was a part of a special team in Afghanistan to where we flew around from FOB to FOB, forward operating bases, what that stands for. And um, we would have to basically go to these new bases. And I was at Cobra. I was oh, at Cobra. Okay. I was based out of FOB uh, Wilson, but they changed. Well, my main base was Kandahar, but the little hub that I was based out of was called FOB Wilson initially, then they changed it to FOB Passab. But then they sent me up north to, uh, to a FOB TK Tarek out. But basically what we would do, we would go to these little bases, these little uh, FOBs or whatever, and basically revamp their telecommunication system. So when we first got to FOB Passab, I was uh, attached to the 101st Airborne, right? And, um, you know, they had Internet access. They had telecommunications, but it was nowhere near as up to speed. They were still dealing with a bunch of line of sight communications. So we went in there. My team and the civilian contractors that worked for me, it was it was like six military personnel. Then I had like 30 contractors that worked for me, which is funny because even though I was their boss, their salaries were like two or three times more than what I was picking and paid, which, <laughs> you know, it was like, man, you know, whatever. But, you know, so we went in there, we set up help desk communications with them. And then we also established this thing called a TCF, stands for Tech Control Facility. And so for those, you know, for those of you who are, you know, not familiar with this stuff, but a tech control facility is basically like um, it's almost the equivalent of like an ISP, an Internet service provider in, in, in a way to where you can route all of the communications into this one build, quote unquote, building per se. And then whether it's your your coaxial cables, your your fiber optic cables or any other type of communication medium will come into this building, you know, through through the actual, you know, through the cables or whatever. And then we will pump the signal up to a satellite dish and blast the signals out to space and, you know, and basically just relay the signals all the way around the world. But our whole mission was to get these guys faster Internet connections, not just so that people can call home and talk to their spouses and their kids, but so that the brass, the colonels and everybody out there could have, you know, faster communication with the guys kicking in the doors who were out yep. there. The Rangers and, and any other special forces people that was out there doing what they had to do. So that was like my main job was just running around from five to five with my team, setting up all these communications. And so I did that for a year, 2010 to 2011, when I was in Afghanistan. And then I came back and I spent my last I got out the army in 2015. So I spent my last four years in the military as in what they call an AIT instructor. So that stands for Advanced Individual Training. And so for those of you who are not military, basically AIT is the place that you go to after you do basic training to learn how to do the job that you uh, signed up to do in the military. Yep. And so I was the guy that was responsible for teaching people who want to become computer tech guys how to do their job in the military as a computer tech guy. And so while I was there, I worked there for four years and, you know, between myself and obviously all my coworkers, but. We, we ended up training like, I don't know, man, hundreds into the thousands of people I mean, that just that was just coming through over the course of four years on how to 
you know, learn basically entry level IT stuff, everything from A plus certifications, network plus security plus. We would teach them some uh, some basic stuff about Cisco networking and then we would teach them some other quote unquote secret squirrel stuff that only pertain to military equipment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so I did that for four years and then I ended up getting medically separated from the military due to uh, past injuries because back in my younger day, I had injured myself jumping out of an airplane in airborne school. <laughs> and so, you know, I still graduated airborne school, but that injury haunted me for most of my career, which um, played a significant factor in, you know, me basically not being able to meet the uh, physical requirements of being in the military. So they ended up medically separating me, which was a blessing because, you know, even though I'm not technically retired, I still get the same benefits as a retiree minus the retired label. Yep. Everything they get, I get. I just, I'm just not officially retired. But and so after that, I went back to school. I used my GI bill. To, <clears throat> I used my GI bill to go back to school as a full time student um, and went back and got my first master's degree in um, information technology with the emphasis on information assurance. And that's directly related to cybersecurity type of stuff. And then after that, I went back and got my MBA. And this was all paid for through my GI bill, my post 9-11 bill. So they were paying me to go to school as they were paying, you know, upwards of five thousand dollars a credit hour <laughs> for, you know, for me to go get my my two master degrees. So after that, um, I was all I was living in Georgia at the time. So after that, I sold my house and moved back down to Florida. Um, and then I started doing some work with this uh, this company that dealt with. Um, they dealt with Fortune 500 companies, but my role that I got hired on, I was actually a, an IT researcher. And so what that meant was I would have to take, we would get all these clients, these big time company clients, and they would give us all of their IT products. And when I say IT products, I'm talking about stuff like, um, I don't know, you know, ServiceNow or whatever it is that the IT software that you use to maintain your organization so that they can conduct whatever activities that they're conducting that, you know, the stuff that the IT people would use. And I would have to get that information and I would have to do like these deep dive analysis into what can these products do, what they can't do, compare and contrast them up against similar products so that they could take this information, package it up into these nice little packages, give it to the to the CIO, the CFO, you know, everybody that sits at the executive suite so that they can figure out if they want to reinvest or divest from a product or do this, that, and the third. And so I spent mad time learning about so many different areas of IT that were outside of my lane. Cause you know, my main lane in IT is pretty much, you know, the, the networking path. Mm -hmm. you know? So because you know, for those of you when, when people think about IT, you got to in, in order for you to kind of like kind of visualize how many different lanes it is. Just think of IT like the medical field. You know, you got the medical field. You got plastic surgeons, heart surgeons, doctor, I mean, a doctor, dentist, uh, pediatrics. You know, basically, you got your own little specialties in the medical field, even though you have like a base layer of under of education, like everybody takes a biology class, but then you start specializing. It's kind of the same way with IT to a certain extent where. I do networking type of stuff. I'm not sure what Keep It Techie what is, but you might have some guys who deal with just straight programming, some guys who deal with straight cloud stuff, which could tie into some other stuff. So my background is really networking. But so when I was working this one job doing this research, it gave me a glimpse into all these like these other areas of IT that I didn't really dibble and dabble in to where I had to learn the software that they're using. to, And I got so good to the point where I knew how to I had a deeper understanding of their software than the people who actually worked at these jobs who were hired to manipulate the software because wow. I had to interpret all this data so that these companies can figure out if they're going to use this money, use this software, or get rid of it because, you know, this software can cost lots and lots and lots of money, man. I'm talking about tens of thousands, if not more dollars for a software program to be licensed to a company to do whatever. So I did that. And then, while I was doing that, I also uh, I also you know taught at a, a tech college, <laughs> so wow, um, I would teach entry level IT um, because what it was I got tired of doing that, and so I was trying to get hired as a college professor, 
because you know, um, you know, I got I got two graduate degrees and all that other crap. So I met the requirements, but the only reason I I didn't you know pursue that route is because I think, you know, basically they're trying to heavily encourage me to go back and get the equivalent of a PhD. You know, for those you don't understand, there are various types of P, quote unquote PhDs. You got your PhD, which is like the highest you can get in the academic world. And then you got uh, what is called an EDD, an educational doctorate. That's what they were wanting me to get. It's like a, I think I think it's uh, the equivalent of like a specialty type of PhD. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but they but basically they were wanting me to go back to school to try to do that. And I was just like, well, you know, are y'all gonna pay for it? Because because <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a fan of not paying for college. And what I mean by that is I've never paid for college a day in my life. Like I went to school on a full academic scholarship for my undergraduate degree. And um, and then when I went back and got my graduate degrees, the military paid for my stuff. So I've never paid for college a day in my life out of my own pocket. You know what wow. I'm saying? And so I'm fortunate, but you know, a lot of people, you know, I know a lot of y'all are hoping and praying that, you know, Biden grants y'all the $50,000. And you know, that's cool. But, you know, I just, when people be talking about Sally Mae and student loans, I, I can't relate because I've never, they've never sent the bill to my house ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. But, so anyways, that's what, that's what happens. So like I say, out of all the stuff that I've done in IT, um, you know, the, the thing that I enjoyed the most was actually teaching IT. Like when I, when I became an AIT instructor teaching entry-level IT, I remember when I went through AIT to learn how to do my job and I thought this was the worst thing in the world, you know, but then when I became the actual instructor and I was on what they call the platform, basically I'm the teacher teaching, it was a whole nother thing when I saw like the little lights go off in people's heads when they started understanding the concepts that I was talking about. Because, you know, I would get a bunch of people in who were brand new off the street. They didn't know anything about IT other than how to hit the power button on their computer to go surf the internet. Or I've had people who had some experience, but maybe they only had like limited experience. But then when we get to talking about this stuff, we get to explaining how the internet works or how computers work, how the internet works, how communications work, how basic security concepts work, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, I see the little the little light bulb go off in people's head. I was like, wow, OK, I can I can really dig in this because the information that I'm putting out here, you know, these people can run with this information a million miles an hour. Like some of these dudes that was in the military with me, they would come in, they would learn the stuff in the AIT land. They would do their two, three, four years in the army, get out and then go out there and get jobs, you know, starting off like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year working for the mm -hmm. federal government or some of them will go overseas as a contractor like Josh did or keep it techie. And you, you guys want to talk about some major cheese. So let me rewind the clock back to, you know, I deployed twice, but my second time I was in Afghanistan, right? The first time I was in Kuwait, but I don't really count that as a deployment. You know, I, basically I got, I got all the combat pay minus the bullets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, which I wasn't mad at, you know, I just, you know, I, just I wouldn't be mad it. either. I just had to deal with the, the intense heat. But when I went to Afghanistan in 2010, you know, matter of fact, the day that I touched down in Afghanistan, we had a we had like multiple rocket attacks that day. And it, and it was just like we on some other stuff. And then, you know, just uh, I remember when I was listening to your stream the other day, you was talking about how you was in field artillery. And I left a comment in there talking about how that stuff used to shake my bones and my DNA. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. But when I was at Fob Wilson, I used to live across the street from the field artillery dudes. And so sometimes I would walk to the DFAC or walk to my job and they would never give a warning when they were blasting them Howards or cannons. And this was like the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, <laughs> dude, they, they shook all the, the, the whatever melanin is in my body just just got rattled up. My teeth were rattling. I mean, it was terrifying. I was like, who does this? Like, why don't they put warnings out for this crap? But then after a while. I got conditioned to hearing <laughs> how it's a cannon going off. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you will adjust to it. And, you know, it, it's just a weird thing. But anyways, getting back to the whole deployment thing with the IT stuff. So, so you know, we're talking about dudes who are coming out the military after a couple of years after, you know, getting some basic training in terms of IT to where they can get jobs starting off like, I don't know, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks an hour. I had guys that were working for me in Afghanistan. Some of them never served in the military. Some did only a couple of years. They were making the, the lowest paid dude on my team that was a contractor was making one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in one year with the first hundred like tax free. I had one dude on my team. He was getting paid almost three hundred thousand dollars. He was our information assurance dude. 
Good Lord. Just one year's worth of work, bro. 300 racks, like the first 100 tax free. And with the option to quit at any time they want, because I couldn't quit. <laughs> they, they would send me back to Kuwait and lock me up on in jail on Camp Arif John out there in the yeah. city of Leavenworth. But these guys could quit. And we had dudes that actually did that. They would just quit in the middle of a contract and bounce. But the pay was ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? It, it was so ridiculous when I got out because, you know, my wife, she, she was in the military as well. And she got out like uh, she got medically separated, you know, about a year or two after I did. But I told her initially, I was like, yo, I want to go back down range as a contractor because I could have made enough money. If I had did like just a year, year and a half, I could have made enough money to come back and pay my house off in cash. Like that's just how much money was going on. And then you combine that with the fact that I got a top secret clearance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, even though it's inactive, but I'm still in the system as to having one. Any, anybody know anything about clearances that just adds more money to your salary it yep. adds more more value to your overall worth you know what i'm saying and so and i've had a ts clearance since 2003 you know what i mean so but anyways these are the things that i that i that i um that i did and so now get all the way to youtube with my tech g channel well i'll tell you how it got started <laughs> so it got started due to a certain content creator that's not really a black YouTube content creator that used to be part of the manosphere. And, uh, you know, y'all y'all know he likes to call himself the GOAT. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you know, his first name starts with the letter T, oh. letter A-Z, Taz. Oh. So anyways, <laughs> I, was on, I was on a panel with, um, it was either Obsidian or O'Shea, right? It was like the first time I had did a panel. And Taz that came up there and, you know, he I was, was watching kinda, it. He was kind of going in on me and yada, yada, yada. Right. And so he was he was questioning me about, do I know what the heck I'm talking about with tech? Where's my proof? And I'm like, well, what you want me to do? Call people up that I've trained like right here on the spotlight. How yeah, that, that was total. That was total bull. But I, of course, I don't have any power. But, to do anything. but the thing is, you know, it, 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 he gave me the idea. I was like, OK, well, here's what I'm going to do. I can't call up all the hundreds of people I help train. But what I can do is come on YouTube and show you what I know what I'm talking about. And so I started making videos on my channel. It's called Tech G, just like my name right here. In the, uh, yeah, I, the put your link. I put oh, it, okay. I put your link in there. So anybody, uh, you guys, y'all can click the link and, and subscribe to Tech G and keep it techie. Both their links are up top. And so. I said what I was going to do with that channel. I was just going to teach IT for free, entry level stuff, like starting with the bare bones, entry level IT cert, which is IT fundamentals. And then I got a class. I, I put that up there. I got A plus, And then I got to start working on network plus and security plus. But basically, I said I was going to put this stuff on YouTube for free because, you know, not just to show tabs like, yeah, look what I'm doing. But because, <laughs> you know, during my years of IT, you know, I came to discover like, yo, in most of the, in most, in most um jobs I worked, even in the military, I was like the only black person around. <laughs> like they really, I mean, they're really, you know, aside from me being an AIT instructor, that's, that was the most I ever worked with other black IT professionals, but all my other units for the most part, it was just kind of like maybe one, one or two of us around. And so then when it started digging off into uh black YouTube, the black mental sphere, and I'm just like, wow, like, where are all the tech dudes? You know, then I discovered Keep It Techie. I discovered Gabe. I discovered some other people. But, you know, I was just looking around YouTube land. I'm like, okay, okay when I go to YouTube and I want to learn how to do something, or I go to Udemy and I want to learn how to do something tech related, like, go get a, you know, yeah, you turned me on to Udemy. Really you yeah. Yeah. I don't really see like a lot of black folks teaching this stuff. So I decided to start teaching it. And I was just going to teach it from the ground up, man. And I'm just focusing purely on entry level certs. Now, some other guys like there's my man Sub Zero. I don't know if you guys are familiar with his YouTube channel. Sub Zero three six nine. Um, he and I actually went to college together at the same time, but we didn't know each other. But he teaches IT as well. But he teaches uh, database stuff. And I'm actually I actually paid him a few months ago. And um, I'm taking his database course because I don't know anything. I don't really know much about database to the extent that he does. Nice. But my focus is just on entry level stuff to get your foot in the door, because even even when you talk about entry level stuff, some people look down on it. But you got to remember, entry level is literally what it sounds like. It's entry level. 
meaning mm -hmm. you're not going to be there for the rest of your life because I've known plenty of people that started off with A plus, network plus, security plus, and within about three three years, five years, they're they're making a hundred thousand dollars. My younger brother, um, my two younger brothers are twins, but the youngest twin, he's a college dropout. He dropped out his freshman year. Um, he took like a five year break, just, you know, just doing some BS. And then he decided to get into IT. He's been in IT for about seven years, eight years. He, he probably makes about ninety, ninety five thousand dollars right now. And he just got a few of these basic entry level certs. But that was enough to get him uh, going into the cybersecurity realm of things where he does cybersecurity right now. And then, you know, I got other relatives that make over six figures doing this stuff. But um, so I just teach the entry level. That's that's my main focus is the entry level stuff. Yeah, to get yeah to get them started. Yeah, just educating you what a computer is like. I mean, I even teach people how to manipulate the binary code, uh, the binary system, how to convert numbers in binary and hexadecimal. Like I get that elementary with it, um, just just so people can have an understanding of it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's the main focus of my YouTube channel and what I choose to talk about on there. And then I give other little tips and things here and there about other general experiences i've had dealing like i just put up a video about two months ago or whatever talking about how you can sneak your resume past uh resume screening software <laughs> um in case you know in case you guys don't know you go out to these websites like indeed you submit your resume well your resume gets scanned by software and if your resume doesn't have enough keywords on it they'll reject your resume i got videos i got a video up now that teaches you how to bypass that system to almost 100% guarantee that your resume will get seen by a person. Now, will they get you the job? No, I'm just trying to teach you how to get past. I just made a video to teach you how to get past the software because apparently a lot of people didn't know that, but I put up little stuff like that as well. So, but that's, that's me in a nutshell though, man. You know what I mean? That's a big nutshell. I am, I am thoroughly impressed. I mean, I knew who you was anyway, cause I was following you before I even knew it. Your your IT background when you was just G Lowry and had the thing on the screen, you know, and, uh, 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 but man, that's, that's all right. Now look at this. Now the person that you were saying that, you know, about you proving this, that, and other, and you can't prove it. Did that person come back to you and say, my bad? Nah, I, I, nah, he never did, and I'll probably never get it, and I'm not expecting it. I know now, you didn't do it for that, but yeah, I mean, well, but you figure an upstanding. Well, in, like I say, initially it started because I was like, okay, he just called me to the carpet to show and prove. Well, I'm finna show and prove, but now he got gotten to the point where he's not, he's he, he's a non-factor in it because the stuff that I'm doing is way more important than my little bickering with him. Because for those of you, if you go to my channel. And you click on my community tab. I post screenshots all the time. Yep. Of people who have watched my videos and went out there and passed these certifications. Yep. You know I saying? watch. I be watching. So, so you know, I, I you know, I put that up as social proof. I'm talking about just off the videos. Now, I got other stuff where they can go to my website, and if they feel like you know, the website is called Technology G, uh, you know, uh, G E E, but if they need additional study materials to where okay, the videos aren't enough. I need additional notes. Well, I have dot like, com or dot net uh, dot com. So technology and then the word G G E E dot com. But um, I put up additional notes. I only sell the notes for like fifty dollars a pop, right? But they're like, yeah, that's it. But they're like ridiculously detailed notes. And then right now, I'm currently in in a company to where I'm trying to get simulation programs in there because I know everybody doesn't have access to a laptop or a computer to go out there and apply the things that they're learning off my videos. So now um, I just had somebody ask me about it the other day and it just so happens. I'm actually in conversations with a company right now to try to license their software so that I can give people access to uh, virtual simulation programs to wow. show them how to manipulate this stuff so that they can get their practice on and go in there and successfully pass these tests. So, but with all that aside, I've had people who just watch the videos, take notes and do whatever they got to do. And they go past the certs and then they'll send me a message through email or in the comments. And I'll take a screenshot and I'll post it up there saying, hey, shout out to this person. You know what I mean, so it's 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 much bigger than me trying to one up some dude on YouTube. 
it's, it's yeah. to the point now it's like, okay. That was still kind of chicken shit, though. <laughs> it's, just, it's just to the point, okay, I have a useful product. Because, you know, for those of you who sub to my other channel, G Dizzle, y'all know I just talk. I just talk about random topics on there, right? And a lot of my topics are criticisms of black society. And one of the things is people always love to impose this question. Well, what are you doing for the community? And I used to hear that a lot. You know what I mean? I still hear it. Yeah. I still hear it. And so my thing is I may talk harshly and criticize the community because there are just certain things that I'm not happy with seeing. And I think even with, within black YouTube and the black manosphere, things could just be go so much differently but i do provide a realistic solution i don't yeah. have the solutions to everything but i have a solution based off of my life and professional experience you know what i mean and that is it so that's what i bring to the table now if same that's the thing with that you, guy sitting on the other side of you same thing yeah, you know yeah my man keep it techie does the same thing yeah yeah so, yeah i mean because man i wanted i've been wanting to do this i'm like because you know, yeah, I would I go on other people's stream, but you know, you've never you'll never see me in the full fledged shouting match. You know, your mama this, your sister that. That's why your old lady left you. And <laughs> I, 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 I can't. I mean, I'm from Detroit's West Side. I can get down with the best of them, but anybody, I mean, an edu an uneducated goon can do that. Yeah. But I figure, man, I maybe I got something to offer, and I look at it like this: I feel like I'm smart enough to surround myself with people that are smarter than me, yeah. and that's where I come in to the uh, the G Lowry's and and the Josh at Keep It Techies and the BA that created Black Avenger. I had dude talking crap after the last stream. I said, dude, do you understand? You trying to talk smack to a guy that got his own workstation, built the mini server, built, <laughs> you know what I mean? Wrote the script, done everything, created it, you know, and everything where you can go on and upload videos and Black Avenger, the original BATV and all this other stuff. Dude, can you do that? Where do you work? I mean, what do you have that skill? Because if you do, how come you ain't done it? Oh, y'all this, y'all that, y'all this, y'all that. Okay, great. Them the ones, bro, we can't help them because they don't want help. They want to disrupt. And those are the ones I try to stay away from. Like the uh, my videos on how to start out, what the things to do to start a convenience store, all them videos I put, I took I took the majority of them down, I put them on private. They, they still there. I just put them on private when people send me stuff and request, then I'll send them the link and whatnot. And people, they pay, you know, us because you're going to pay somebody for this. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to get this for free. Yeah. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get it as thorough. And everybody that's then got it from me said, you ain't charging enough. That's a trip. People didn't pay me said, dude, for the information you gave us, you're not charging enough. Now, I didn't use that as no excuse to raise the rate, but no. I always talked about you. I've always pushed your stuff. I always push Keep It Techie stuff. I had dude send me a text say, man, I just watched Keep It Techie's video three times and I'm still lost. <laughs> I said, no. man, I said, but if you don't understand Linux, I said, you got to, you need a beginner's guide to Linux first because he's a mm -hmm. Microsoft guy. But now, I do want to say something because, you know, you mentioned about charging because I, I have a lot of people that ask me how I on YouTube for free and I don't put it on Udemy or whatever. I give a lot, of, you know, what you give a lot of stuff free. Well, there, there, there's, a, there's a main reason why I do it. And the main reason why I put it up on YouTube for free is because I don't I want to remove all excuses from people, you know, especially in the black community, you know, in black YouTube where we had these conversations. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, if I put it up for free, what excuses do you have? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I mean, because, you know, there are some other YouTubers. Um, there, there's a particular YouTuber. I don't know if you've seen his videos, but he goes by the name of Master IT. Yes. Um, I, yeah. Well, me and him we used to work together in the military. So we know each other in real life. Real cool. thorough dude. Very knowledgeable. Knows what he's talking about. Got love for the brother. But you're going to have to pay to get that knowledge from him. And he's real thorough. And, you know, everybody who rocks with him, get that man his money. But I'm in the black manosphere. He, he doesn't make content like this. So 
when I create the content, then I kind of cross promote it every now and then. I just wanted to really remove all excuses from black folks who are talking about, you know, because I, I, you know, even if I were to charge 50 bucks, there's always going to be somebody who's talking about that's too expensive. So I was yeah. like, well, I just Mine was free. free. I done 10 of them free, and the only thing yeah. I got was pushback. So I took them down. I figure if I'm going to get heat, I may as well get paid for it. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, so like I said, I, I, I give it away for free because I'm just like, I'm not. You know, yes, I like money like everybody else, but I'm not with this particular project of IT. I'm not driven by mainly just the acquisition of money. I'm more, I'm more so driven by the fact that I want to see more people, black folks, get into IT before y'all get left behind. Because, you know, th this is just the reality of the situation with my profession. You're just not going to come across a lot of black people like that. And for those of you who are unaware, you got the overall IT industry is like begging for people to sign up for these jobs or apply for these jobs. But there's so many people who are just not qualified to do it. And then when you break that down into the black populations, it's just hella black folks who just don't have the skill sets to do it. And, are you know, for whatever reason, and then this even, even trickles down to the children, because even with within high schools, you go to certain high schools, you know, they're, they're already teaching kids STEM as young as like uh, middle school. And I know of a program where I live at to where they got high school kids, you know, you know, if they stick to a certain plan, by the time they graduate high school, not only will they have their high school diploma, they'll have four entry level IT certifications, the ones that I teach. And mm -hmm. they'll also have their two year college degree and associates in science. All this by the time they're 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? And. This is not at the, the predominantly black schools, <laughs> you know, if you imagine. <laughs> so, but, you know, but this is this is the reality of the world we're moving into, man. And so I put my stuff up for free. Keep it techie puts his stuff up there. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure he, he got some plans of, you know, well, I, I don't know what his business is. So I'm not going to speak on that. But we put it up there. Or at least, you know, we put it up there because, you know, I feel like it's important because, of the society that we're living in. And if yeah, you don't I like to help people. this stuff or you don't have to become an expert like myself and keep it techie. But even if you, but you need to have some type of understanding of it because it imp literally impacts every aspect of your life. Yes. Literally. Yes, it does. Everything. <laughs> so. I tell every everything. It has something to do with that. Now tell people, now look at what we got here. Look who you got. You got a guy that, that built email servers for a living. Mm -hmm. Got you and keep it techie if us three can do you know what i'm saying this stuff hey uh techie where can you hear me bro yeah i got you where mm -hmm. would somebody be able to go i mean just basic entry level like this is linux i mean just right you know grassroots there windows guy now nah, they ain't trying to, you know, they because I manipulate the hell out of Windows. But uh, you know, but I I know how I bet you Bill Gates in his office pulling his freaking hair out, <laughs> but uh, because I ain't no joke. But where but because I know people they're 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 Windows savvy, they know how to use it, but they have zero lint, I mean, just nothing. Mm -hmm. Where 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 would you suggest the first place they go? I think the to be honest, like one of the first place, places to go is YouTube, uh, because there's plenty of people doing that have done uh, videos based on. Uh, I mean, just just entry level Linux uh, overview, like what is Linux? Um, you know, there's plenty of videos out there that are actually doing that stuff. And then also, you know, you, it might be best to purchase a book. And this is like one of the first books that I uh, that I bought. Uh, right here, and I'm bought. I've actually bought this book like uh four or five times. It's basically a Linux pocket guide. So if you're interested in it, you know what I'm saying. This will walk you through all the base commands and how to do it. And and uh, I'm glad you you know kind of brought it up or whatever. This this is one thing that I'm currently working on, and I'm behind on it. Uh, and I even told Tag G about this. Uh, I'm planning on kind of following his model, but I'm gonna create a, a Linux course as well uh, soon. I'm, I've already started on it, I've outlined it all, 
uh, and I've started working on it, but uh, it's not to the point where I'm ready to release it. Uh, but yeah, that's one thing I'm planning on uh, producing at some point hopefully you gotta wait the first get out of his record yeah. deal with cash money records yeah. gotta, <laughs> once he get out of once he get out of that 360 contract with cash money <laughs> yeah they taking my money they taking my money <laughs> <laughs> yeah but man, them 360 nah, man. deals is horrible <laughs> yeah yeah but one thing i wanted to say though um and i apologize i didn't know if you had i was trying to let tech g, tech g go man because i mean he he has a lot of knowledge and he put out a lot. He has a great, you know, background, and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And he was uh, the guy, not him personally, that we were mm -hmm. waiting for. Remember I was telling you about the dragonfly? We is, they is waiting to fly somebody in and we didn't have enough generator. Yeah. Uh, uh, electric to run the thing that it was them. And I'm like, they in BDUs. What are they name tags? What are you attacking? <laughs> what not? They looking at me like, you mind your damn business, Gunny. We got yeah. this. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, because I was going to ask him. I was going to ask him based on what he said earlier. I was like, you. So have you I met? Mean, uh, did you meet uh, Edward Snowden? Because <laughs> I know he worked on some of those contracts, you know, tied to the NSA. And, nah, I didn't and meet areas. Edward Snowden, but. The, there was this female they used to be in the air force her real name is reality star like her first name is reality last name star and she got busted for trying to sneak some paperwork out of the nsa building what? or something like that a couple, couple years ago right uh because she didn't realize she basically she, she she was printing stuff off and it was she was trying to use this paperwork against trump but she didn't realize that the printers in the building kept tabs of everything that was printed <laughs> who don't know that so, who but, don't know that but she worked in the same building as me. Now we didn't know each other, but she worked in there in that particular building. And that particular building, it's extremely secure, meaning you got to go through just, just to get to from the parking lot to my office. I had to go through about four or five checkpoints. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so she's in here trying to sneak paperwork out. I'm just like, now she's probably sitting in Leavenworth somewhere right now. So you she's <laughs> she's a anti church. You you she's such an ideologue that you willing. Yeah, liberalism is a mental disorder. But you know, it's, it's crazy because you know when you first started working there, they used to give us all this training about yo, don't do this, don't do that. Right. And I just don't think people realize how important that building is to na to national security and um and other things. But for her to do something like that, it's just like you know, was it worth it at the end of the day? Like <laughs> when I went to uh, BCS BUCS uh, training the computer training you know that's you know for basically guidance you know and aim and direction and everything for you know the artillery pieces same thing I, you had to have a security clearance to even go i didn't want to go i was da selected both of y'all know what that is but uh um what's up sly um you know da selected for that i mean i didn't want to go but y'all know how it is ue5 e5 promotable that guy with that damn chrome chicken on his hat say you going you going yep yep and same thing background and, uh, man i was scared people like well, what do you do nothing <laughs> i mean i ain't got nothing to say yeah. it's crazy oh, yeah, but, it's yeah crazy. um just uh just to add though what you was um that question you asked me uh, there are, you know, a bunch of courses, and I know Tech G already said that on Udemy, uh, basic Linux courses, and that'll kind of get you started if you've never touched a Linux operating system, as well as like Cor Coursera. They got free courses on there as well. So um, just check those out. But sorry to interrupt you, G. Go ahead. Nah, nah, you're good, man. Uh, Udemy is a good resource. Um, a lot of the classes are super cheap, like 10 bucks. Um, you know, you, you, when you log into Udemy, if you never use it, they'll advertise the prices at like 140 bucks. But every time I go on Udemy, every, everything's being sold for ten dollars. <laughs> like I've never seen anything on there not being sold. And I'm signing up. I got I got a bunch of classes on there that I've bought. I mean, you can use this thing for everything from tech. I've taken classes off Udemy to learn how to do um, drop shipping, all kind of stuff, right? But YouTube is the greatest resource, in my opinion, because it's free and it's just a plethora of information out there. You know, there's something that I talk about on my other channel all the time. I'm like, look, I know we like to talk about the Negro nonsense and engage in the ratchetness, <laughs> but it's so much bigger than YouTube is so much bigger than just black YouTube in the black manosphere to where 
you can go out there and watch full blown videos and get certified or, or take class. I got a homeboy, another homeboy I went to college with. He's a he's a high school calculus teacher. This joke wow. is a math expert. I he hate calculus. All, well, he, he has a YouTube channel where all he does is teach people how to do math. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, you got your kids, they struggling with some algebra concepts. You got brothers out there that make stuff like that. But my thing yeah, somebody said YouTube University. But that's essentially kind of what it almost is trans transforming into. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the the CEO of YouTube, she just sent out this email not too long ago talking about how they're going to start pushing more educational content. I guess trying to get it more awareness because, you know, due to the whole beer flu or the pandemic, everybody's online watching videos, trying to learn stuff, trying, you know, because there are people who watch my content on my Tech G channel who are trying to sw switch careers. Like, you know, because they made their job may have been in jeopardy or whatever, whatever, because of the pandemic or the economy. And now they're trying to switch careers and they're going to watch my content to learn how to get into IT. And then you got people who are starting off for the first time coming straight out of high school or whatever. But, you know, it's just all types of information out there that I think a lot of you guys and I'm not saying I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all do this. But this is just one of the things I talk about on my channel is like, look, you can enjoy the ratchetness. We can talk about the latest beef and the drama. But, man, don't. Don't neglect no. Don't neglect the totality of this website because it's so much stuff on here that can really transform your life within a relatively short period of time. Because the stuff that I teach, you can literally be working a minimum wage job at Burger King six months from now, but you're earning like thirty bucks an hour on your mm -hmm. way to fifty dollars and beyond. Mm -hmm. Like as in literally, I'm not even making that up. No, you know you're right. So, and a lot of the courses that are on like Udemy. Um, they, they have pretty much this exact same course on YouTube. Like I've, I mean, I'm like, I'm currently working through a Python course on YouTube. It's an eight hour course. Somebody's actually taking you through from the beginning all the way through the whole process of how to actually work with this language. And I've been working through it, you know, slowly. I watch like 30 minutes here. Uh, I have it bookmarked and, I, and then I'll come back, you know, later and watch it 30 minutes later, w w just whenever, you know what I'm saying? But you step through the stuff and uh, they show you how to install the application on your computer, whether it's Linux, Mac or or Windows. Uh, and you can learn these programming languages uh, mm -hmm. eight hours. Just take it. Just take eight hours away from watching ratchet shit on in the manosphere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and yeah, you, you can take a break get from into that ratchet this. stuff. Yeah. Feed your head. You know, feed your head. Because uh, I mean, I know it's all fun and entertainment. Sometimes we need a, a laugh somewhere along the way. But at the end of the day, that shit ain't gonna. I mean, excuse my language. That stuff ain't gonna put. Uh, beans in the pot, you know what I mean? And electricity for that light overhead, you know what I mean? But this, what you guys are talking about, will you can eat well off of what these two gentlemen right here are telling you? And, you and one me, thing I want to say, oh, I'm with me, but you make some money with them, <laughs> yeah. And one thing I wanted to say, I didn't want to uh hop in the middle of when Tech G was talking, man. He brought up the whole uh overseas contracting. I just released a and I think you've seen it, uh. Uh, Nick, where I released that interview I did with someone else uh, about yep. uh, contracting overseas. Well, yeah. I actually did that during that time. I, I deployed as well the exact same time Tech G. I was in country the exact same time Tech G was there uh, in Afghanistan. And then I went home uh, and I already had some IT background. But while I was there, uh, I met a lot of contractors just like Tag G did. And I hand my resume to a few of them and they passed it along to the hiring managers. And as soon as I came back, I was still on leave. See, I, the difference between me and Tag G, I was a reservist. He was active duty. So he was mm -hmm. going back to a unit. Uh, I went back home basically. And then I went on leave and all that stuff. And so anyway, I was still they in under contract. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I hopped in the IOR, which is uh, inactive ready reserve. And uh, they called, they, they gave me a call and brought me back over to Afghanistan. And I spent four and a half years. That's uh, how I got a cause database I was, administrator. I was, uh, I was IC, on, so. I, I was on IRR and I'm like, I'm too old. They like gunny. What? Load your shit up. 
Let's go. Like, Damn. But then when I saw all them young, scared privates straight out of OSUT from Fort Sale, you know what I mean? This they first act. I mean, like, I'm, I got 30. Pri- they ain't no nothing. I'm like, man, one of us got to go. One of, and me and Sergeant Schaefer from our the, our reserve, you, me and him, we is flipping coin. He said, nah, if you going, I'm going to. I said, you can't do that. He's like, watch me. And he talked to Sergeant Major and Sergeant Major talked to the general. And next thing I know, he, I'm like, I can't get rid of this guy. But, uh, but man, but yeah, but you guys, the stuff that y'all gave ground pounders like us, it helps a lot. I mean, you may, I know in uniform, we poke jabs at each other and all this. Hey, we mess with the cook, but if the cook decide not to cook, what are we going to do, right? <laughs> we in a, we in a, yeah, now we know how to cook, but you, do you know how to cook for a whole battalion? You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. What, three times a day? So, you know, we we poke with the, with the truck driver, but he, he bring our ammo. You know what I mean? He bring our stuff. We... That that truck mechanic, he don't fix that truck. I don't get no ammo. I ain't get no ammo, man. I'm dead in the water. So, and I and being both y'all, both computer guys, that like we ain't got to expect the most important motherfucker is Camo. Man, that's it. We protect Camo. They like say you protect the communications guys with your life because your life depends on it. You know what I mean? Because they're your, you know, your ears, you know, back to the talk. You know, you can't talk mm-hmm. to the people in the big chair. You know, if if that man, I know y'all see. I look at the back of that five seven seven track, and I'm looking at all these radios and antennas sticking off. I'm look at all this shit. The generator on the the alternator on that thing gotta be that big. How do they make all that electricity to run all that stuff in that track? That's insane. But we but we need y'all, and I always think. The, the support guys. I tell people, look, you give us the support to win the war. You give us the support, we'll kill the bad guys. That's our job. We'll kill them. <laughs> you just make sure, you know, our stuff is on and we'll kill them. And I every I never pass up the opportunity to thank because you guys' job is just important, if not, if not more in some cases, than what us ground guys do. So there's my spill to y'all. Yeah, I mean, I agree. <laughs> you know, I mean, all the jobs are important, but that, yeah. that combo thing is 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 something very serious, especially in the combat zone. Yeah, I was man mm-hmm. would think, man, we man, I didn't watch. They didn't park M one. We'd be up there in the field. They have put a M one Abrams in front of the combo track. Like now, nah, we would let the tank take the hit. You hit the man. They hit that five seven seven. Was, we um, in the world of shit. When I was when I was in um. <laughs> And when I was at Fob Wilson or Fob Asab, um in Afghanistan, we had put up giant T-walls around our TCF and help desk. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a T-wall, just think of a giant concrete wall that's probably like 15, 20 feet high in the sky. Mm-hmm. And it was designed to uh, block RPGs when they launched RP- uh, rocket propelled grenades over the wall. So our our section was the first section to be protected because we're like the, the heartbeat of the, of the base. You, you knock out our communication satellite just like Nick said, we're dead in the water. We can't talk to anybody. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? So and you in the yeah, and you in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And and you can't talk. Uh oh, Zach. Zach, what's your question, Zach? Go ahead and type it in the thing. That's the, that's who I said. That's my buddy right there. He done, done live streams with me. He is like, oh, you gotta have them up. Oh, I got all kind of questions for them. So, but he's taking. Uh oh. When did y'all have a sea whiz? Uh, when it deep. when it's question time. No, go ahead, bro, because I don't, I ain't gonna hold these brothers too long because it's Saturday. Did they have a sea whiz there? Or well, I, I forget what they call it on the others in the army, but it's basically the sea whiz. You know what I'm talking about? That automatic uh weapon that shoots the yeah, explosive yeah, rounds. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, it looks yeah, like yeah. a at the RPG like a bubble. We had one at our base. Yeah. It has a Gatling gun pretty much yeah. in, in the center of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, we hit, man, know it. Um, that thing going off is loud, man. The tank <laughs> guys like, and Camo got and other yeah. people they didn't came. They's like, look, we love being with artillery, but we hate being with y'all. They say we love being with you because you guys 
you know, y'all got it to get, you know, the protection. Y'all got the guns, the big guns. Ain't nobody, ain't a whole bunch of people running towards a cannon. You know, most people are, are running away from it and whatnot. Y'all got machine guns and y'all dug in and all this other stuff. They said, but, you know, but y'all loud. I mean, we can't, yeah. you know, we can't get any sleep. You want to, hey, you want to be, you want to be loud and safe or you want to be quiet and, and in a, you know, in a hot zone and what? Because, uh, yeah, you know, where I was at, like I said, my uh my sleeping quarters was directly across the street from where the howitzer cannon was right so after a while i had kind of got used to hearing it but where our fob was situated at we had we had a mountain range on three sides of the base so mm -hmm. the echo just reverberate just just ridiculously loud man but i just like i said earlier i just kind of wish you guys would have gave like a heads up i understood why you didn't <laughs> Because every time I heard the cannon blast, the first thing I thought was, man, somebody's about to have a bad day. <laughs> well, it's, it's, if, it's if it's night real night. quiet, you can hear the GDU go off on the howitzer because that's like our little alarm to let us know we got fire data on the cannon. It's just a it's real. It's not real loud. But even though it, it, it'd be quiet, I could be dead sleep, bro. And I can hear that GDU go Fire mission, fire mission. <laughs> and, and when you hear, look, when you hear the powder cans, the tops being knocked off of powder cans, and you hear the how, and you hear that the, the shell being rammed, the, the, don't worry, it, here we go. It's, it's show time, show time, go time. But Zach, well, I don't see your question, Zach. Uh, you just posted. But, uh, bro, now, um, so, G, yeah. is there for these guys i know you got different i i now I, I noticed that you got this you got that is there a, a place where the average person should start like a starting point like is it a, a catch-all for all these different fields you should start right here before you decide to branch and go either way is it something is there uh, something like that yeah well it's, it's kind of a yes and a no so what i mean is um there's a you can do a Google search for CompTIA IT roadmap, security so certification roadmap, and it'll pull up like a chart that kind of explains, you know, shows you different career paths in IT and where to start, what certifications that you should aspire to get along your path. But then I say no because I always tell people, what do you want to do in IT? Like what you want to do in IT is going to dictate where you start. So like this dude, uh, Zach, he just put something in here. He yeah, says, there you know, go. Yeah, I was waiting till you finish. Starting to get back in the tech, and I would like to create video games, and I would like to have a solid foundation. He's taking a Python course. What would I recommend? So, the stuff that I teach isn't going to help him. I mean, it'll help him understand computers, but I don't teach anything pertaining to computer programming. So I wouldn't. It would probably be a waste of his time to learn my material when he can go out there and learn python learn uh you know i'm not a programmer but c plus plus any type of programming language that can help him make video games and then he also has to weigh in does he need to go to college for this you know or does he need to go to a tech school or you know how how is how is he going to get the training so it's just a matter of what do you want to do in it and um that's gonna ultimately dictate where you start because what if you want to become a data scientist you want to yeah. analyze big data. Yes. You're probably going to have to go to college. You're probably going to have to take calculus classes or, you know, you probably have to do all kinds of things. But if you just want to jump straight into help desk work, networking stuff, then my stuff will be perfect for you. Um, I'm not sure what, what uh, Keep It Techie does, but uh, whatever he does, it might be a different path. It's just a matter of identifying what NIT do. And then that is going to ultimately kind of give you guidance as to how you should go about starting. Now, is the information that I teach, can it cross over into different things? Of course, you can learn my stuff and then beside, and then decide I wanna be a programmer, I wanna be doing this, I wanna do that. I mean, it's still all relevant to IT, but is it gonna get you to your destination faster or slower or, you know, it's just, a, you gotta figure out where you wanna start in IT or what do you wanna do first? Yeah, man, Microsoft also, front page shot a whole, you know how much money we were making, making websites before Microsoft put mm -hmm. front page out where anybody could buy it. Oh, any advice on building a portfolio for front end developer roles? 
Uh, I think that's probably more of a keep it techie lane right there. <laughs> you might it ain't my lane. Frank, Frank, oh, hold on. Any advice on building a portfolio for Frank and development roles? Um, to be honest, I don't I don't know on that. Um on that front uh front end development well i mean it all depends on what you're that all that all ties to programming at the end of the day front end development when it comes to development it could be application development uh any type of development it could be mobile application development i mean it's it all requires you understanding a programming language now one thing i can recommend to you is uh create your github account as well as go on there and look at the type of programming language that you're trying to learn uh, because they have plenty of people that are already developing uh, applications or or it, it could be anything web applications uh, and they put their free and open source code on github so that'll that'll be a good starting point to actually uh, get some experience but once you uh, figure out what language you want to learn then that GitHub uh, could be used at your portfolio because a lot of people nowadays, what they do is, especially when they're going for development type positions or programming type positions, uh, they reference their GitHub within their resume uh, as a portfolio. I mean, and, and that will let them know that you've actually worked on projects like for when, for instance on github when you help develop on projects they'll put you down as a contributor to that a actual program or front or um, application that is working that you you made changes to this code and it was actually accepted by the the main developer of it so um that's one way to kind of build a, a portfolio uh and i hope that made sense um, it makes sense to me. Yeah, that's that's one of the ways you can build that portfolio. Yeah. So I'm I'm I don't know I I don't know what Sean's I I don't maybe if, I I don't understand the question really I don't but that's me because I'm a goo I'm the um, dummy in the group. Well, it looked like he says I want to learn how systems work, breaking them down in the nitty gritty of them. How would I go about doing that? I mean, systems in IT is really like a umbrella term <laughs> so that, that can okay. mean anything you know what i'm saying but as it relates to what i teach we do teach you the basics of the basics of it like we, we, we'll pull apart well we'll break down a motherboard and cover all the details of every component on the motherboard and then you know we start talking about some networking stuff you know we'll talk about how these things how, how the internet works you know we oh, start I talking can about do that. Like <laughs> I, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we just talk about a, a variety of different things. So it just it's just a matter of what does he mean by systems. But mm -hmm. as it relates to the stuff that I do, or I teach, you know, I teach the bare bones, entry level stuff. This is this is what binary is. This is what hexadecimal is. This is what a motherboard is. The various components. This is what the this is what cloud computing is. This is what you know. This is what these acronyms. You know, I, I I'm on some step by step baby stepping you through it. So that you know y'all can graduate and go see keep it techie and learn some more advanced stuff like linux and beyond you know what i mean so that's kind of my approach to uh you know breaking the uh so-called systems down i am so scared i i, I understand i know about all the so-called securities and all this other stuff i am still i i i i'm not sold on cloud computing that's why with the help of uh ba black avenger um mm -hmm. When I, I built my NAS server, I got my I got my own in-house. I, I took myself off the cloud. I took my company off the cloud. And I'm not saying that anybody else should do that. I'm just chicken because I got the stuff that's on mine. Uh, video, insurance, accident scene crashes, you know, uh, fatality accident scene crashes. The insurance companies involved. Audio from the police talking. Audio from... You know what I mean? The EMTs talking and this and all this other good stuff. The video, you can see the cars, the license plates, the bodies and all that other stuff, because that's part of my job mm -hmm. for being the uh, incident manager for uh, for two sheriff's departments that I have contracts with. And I'm like, man, 
if somebody get, cause y'all know how the insurance business go. I'm not an insurance guy, but you know, somebody uh, that's filing against, you know, keep it techie trucking crashed and killed my mom and pushed her car and it crashed into the dollar general and done a million dollars worth of damage to that building. And they know I got the video of the whole scene from start to finish mm -hmm. that somebody would be willing to pay, you know what I'm saying? To pay to get that, you know, that, that video, because then they can skewer it. Cause a lot of time we're subpoenaed to go to court. Do you know, I got to hold on to the video and put it. I got a case of these and each one of them, we got a number engraved into the back of them and a sergeant or higher has to come pick it up to take it to court. Mm. That's what I do now. You know what I'm saying? I guess it's just a matter of... Yeah, I took uh, myself off the cloud and built the in-house NAS because I'm just chicken. I think it's just a matter of weighing the pros and cons of whether cost. you want to do some... Cost. Yeah, well, that yeah, that's one of the major factors. But it's not just cost, it's also security that's tied into it. Yeah. Because, you know, even though your stuff is on-premise, that's what it's actually called, on-premise. Mm -hmm. um, but you are also responsible for making sure that it's secured, you have enough power, electric electricity <laughs> to keep the power going so that you know none of the stuff fails. Yeah, uh, you're responsible for any type of redundancy issues yep. that need to take place so you don't lose the data. When you deal with cloud providers, you know, depending upon what type of cloud service you get, they are responsible for all of that. You're just really responsible for just uploading the data, right? And, you know, and creating the you know, the user, the, the, the who, who can uh, get access to the data if they need to get access to it, yada, yada, yada. So it, it's just a matter of how you want to do it because, you know, cloud computing can get very expensive. <laughs> and that's what, that's what it starts getting because I'm in, I'm in year six and it's just getting high. And then I looked at how much I spent and I'm like, bruh, you could have built, you know what I mean? You know how to do it because I built it myself. And so that's why I went on ahead I went on ahead and, and I done it and, um, you know, I got, you know, uh, 82 terabytes in house mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, I have it and, uh, I didn't switch to raid six, uh, cause I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't switched over to raid six from raid five to raid six and yeah, it eat up, but it's faster. You know, it's, it's, it, it operates a little, it's easier to retrieve. It's faster to retrieve data. I'm sorry. I got a question. I'm asleep at the wheel. My bad. Says, how does one protect intellectual property on the cloud? Well, um, I can't, well, I don't, yeah, no, that's, that's y'all. No, I was just going, <laughs> I was just going to say, um, one thing encryption, but I don't know if, just go down and say that, but well, I will say what you're going to say. I, well, okay. Here's the thing about intellectual property. You can't 100% protect it. Now, what you what you want to do if you have intellectual property, first thing you need to do is go get it copyrighted or trademark or in particular copyrighted um, because people can steal your stuff. All I mean, they do it now, <laughs> especially in China. They, they do it. They rip stuff off all the time over there. And that's like a major issue. But encryption is a, is a part of it. If you can upload it to the cloud and you have some high level encryption like aes encryption or something like that that can help do it but there's still a there's always a possibility that somebody can get access to it but the biggest thing is you can't really is is there is no sure proof yeah, there's no guarantee intellectual yeah. property man unless you just never take it out of your brain <laughs> you know what i mean um but you need to go through and copyright this stuff you know copyright you know we talk about copyrights in the classes that i teach as well um just the basics of it. We don't we don't get into like copyright law or anything like that. But you, you need to go out there and do a copyright and or a trademark, you know, depending upon what it is. Because you know, there is a difference between the two. I'm not gonna go into that in this <laughs> discussion right now, but mm -hmm. yeah, a, and I and but you're right on that you're, because go ahead. No, nah, go, go ahead, man. No, two nah, years I'll, I'll ago, just, I'll just we had a lieutenant oh, lose one of these and it had a three million dollar uh hazardous material cleanup spill on a drive and a lieutenant police lieutenant lost it oh shoot bro nobody was sleeping 
You know what I mean? You know, y'all know how it is. Lose a right, lose a lose a rifle at the rifle range. Ooh. Ain't nobody leaving that rifle range. They mm -hmm. y'all police call stretched out. Y'all walking that range from end to end. You know what I'm saying? Until uh somebody finds that thing. But yeah, but I yeah, lieutenant lieutenant. Signed for it every because you're on camera when you come into my place. Signed for it, got the number, and he lost it. Mm -hmm. The 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 sheriff came unhinged, magistrate was came unhinged. Dude, that's the only time in the world that I actually got to talk to a US representative on the phone. Wow. Cause they uh, yeah. I ain't going to say his name, but it's for the state of Texas. I got to talk to you, but he called and how you do it? My, my it's like, oh shit. But, um, uh, back up, but we need to do everything we can to find that and this, that, and other. And dude, it was, uh, how do you do that? But, the, but Hey, we are both, all of us military Lieutenant. You don't trust lieutenant with nothing. You <laughs> I'd rather give it to a I give it to a PFC before I give it to a lieutenant. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> you know, man, because a lieutenant ain't to me, he a he a private in the officer's ranks. That's all a lieutenant is to me. He a private. He a private, you gotta salute. But any of I'm sorry, anything. Yeah, base going on lockdown. You're right. Ain't nobody going. Ain't nobody going nowhere. Uh, they lost uh, lost the uh, the exchange barrel for M60 machine gun because you know you swap them and whatnot. Yeah. Went to go, they couldn't find a barrel. They shut Grafenveer because this was in Grafenveer, Germany. Mm -hmm. They shut Grafenveer down until yeah. we until second ACR found that barrel. Somebody got really. I know. Uh, a gun chief got relieved. He wasn't in my battalion, but a gun chief got relieved. The gunner got relieved and the chief of fire and battery got reprimanded by a two star general. You don't you don't want that in your 201 file as an E7. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And now here go. The, now here go. My, look at the support my brother gave me. I mean, just yeah. Love you, too, bro. Yeah, that's my bro. <laughs> Butter bar. Hey, yep. But. Huh? Nick, I wanted to go back to uh, one of the do questions do, that was bro. asked earlier. I, uh -huh. It finally popped back up in my head what Which I was going to say was after it, G. It the was uh, dealing property? with the gaming. No, nah, I was dealing oh, with the, the gaming. gaming. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, basically, right. um, one of the things you need to hop into is Unreal Engine. Uh, that's that is one of the top notch development. Yeah. Uh, software or ide for developing games nowadays and they have a community edition you can download that on windows uh linux uh and mac os uh install it on there and play around with the uh, unreal engine but that's what a lot of video games are being developed on right now uh unreal engine and that's for all the different platforms ps5 ps4 so that's that popped up in my head when he asked that question. So yeah, yeah, check that out. Yeah, I I tend to I'm trying to get completely away from Windows. I plan on being completely. I mean, just have one Windows machine for applications that I just need Windows for, you know. But uh, everything else, I'm trying to get. Uh, I'm trying to get completely away, mainly for stability issue, and of course. You know, vi people I say, well, we get with Linux virus. I say, yeah, I said, do you know how hard it is to give Linux a virus? You know, compared to Windows, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very hard. If it was just my own private public, my own computer at home, I'm goofing off. I wouldn't even bother. I just, but you know, for work, uh, scale, scaling, scalability, stability. You know, ease, you know, once ease a setup, once you, I mean, once you got it going, once you got it coded, you know, just, just, just leave it alone. But that's what I would work on. But that's pretty good. I didn't know, uh, um, I didn't know anything about the games. I don't know how games are created. I don't know how none of that stuff is created, you know, where you got guy running and gun and shoot and jump. I, I have no idea. I'm quite sure it's very extensive, 
but I don't know anything about it. Okay, take taking your familiar. Okay, are you de googling androids? I don't know what that yeah, means. It's, it's um, I forget what it's called. I, I, I don't know if it's a um, I can't remember if it's a phone distribution or if it's uh, it's just a process that that name means but i've heard it before the googling android i think it may be um and i can look it up now but um basically what it is is basically getting google off of the android device because a lot of people don't like okay don't want to be tracked you know all that good stuff and it's kind of like de-googling your computer or de-googling everything really some people you know, want to de Google or get off of Google's platform because of the all the tracking that's that's yeah, done. My, my computer, did I do the billing and payroll and all that stuff on? Ain't no Google, nothing on that mm-hmm. machine, nothing. <laughs> you ain't even, dude, ain't even no email on that machine, none. There's not even an email. There ain't no op- there's no no Outlook, no Yahoo, no Gmail. There's nothing on that machine. Nothing. But yeah, because that, oh. that machine, that's you know, because that machine got too much stuff on it. Yeah. Cause one thing about about um ah, never mind. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I forgot what I was gonna say, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Well, shoot, we're at an hour and 20 minutes. Um, uh, gee, anything else you want to put in? I mean, because man, I try to explain to people the importance of getting skills and getting started and stuff like you like you do, but I sound like I sound like a truck driver talking computers because I'm a truck driver talking computers. <laughs> so I mean, but you know, y'all y'all are way more uh uh eloquent. And saying that because the and the ones that said, I mean, and I ain't picking on him, but like the one that's giving G static, okay. G gave it to you. Now what you gonna do with it? You ain't gonna do nothing with it. Okay, so you was just hoping to up in me, up in him. Them ain't the ones I ain't worrying about them. I can give a F U C K about the ones that's just trying to up in somebody that's doing something. All of us are gainfully employed, doing our thing, taking care of family. You know what I mean? Living life a little bit. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we all every, we all have hiccups, but you know what I mean? But we hold it down. We hold our own, all of us. But there's a lot of people. Y'all know the drill. Go away, make shit because you, we all black. You know, a lot of people be wanting to ask stuff, but they afraid to ask because they know how the hood get down. You know what I mean? Oh, you trying to be all, and you think that shit was left in middle school? Mm-mm. Grown ass Negroes still do this stuff. So they be wanting to ask, but they don't want to hear it from somebody else. But now you got two of your own sitting right here and somebody may go back and look at this restream. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, Y'all, oh, I'm sorry. No, this for me. What's my opinion of Detroit 12.7 engine big dog? Um, uh, uh, Detroit 12.7 low torque, high RPM. It's a that's a if it's you take care of it, it's a 800,000 mile motor. You're not gonna get a core charge out of it. I've never in t- over 20 years, I've never seen anybody get a core charge out of getting a reman for Detroit diesel. The new DD twelves and the DD uh, DD fifteen DD sixteen something else. You can get a core on DD sixteen, uh, uh, twelve point seven liter Detroit. Forget it. And uh, yeah, uh, void ELDs. It yeah because yeah because it don't have that um, the the update ECM. Detroit's are uh, very fuel efficient, but if you're pulling heavy loads or you're in mountainous region, you don't want that engine. You want to go up to go up to either a uh, um, uh, uh, Cummins or a Caterpillar. Cummins is in between Cat and Detroit in the torque world. Cat more torque and and Cummins uh, more horsepower. Parts availability are very. Uh, Cummins is the easiest engine to get serviced. I'm sorry. Go ahead, y'all. I was answering this question. 
Oh, I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, the, that stuff. I, oh, no, no, sir, no, sir. We're not. No, no. no I think <laughs> uh, unsunken no, one. Fuck with us. That's all he do. I think unsunken one. He put a question up. He says, "Oh, I'm sorry." He says, "Where to go?" Uh, oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Oh, it's yeah. What do you gentlemen think about the coming influx of East Indians, and how will this affect the sector? So, he's talking about all of these uh, Indians from the country of India. Yep. Uh, it's supposed to be like two man packs. Yeah, it's supposed to be like five hundred thousand of them are supposed to be coming over here. Now, how, how is this going to affect the sector? Um, I predict certain sectors because a lot of them are known to do like database work. It's probably going to drive salaries down because a lot of these people they're going to come over here and they're going to be willing to do the job for less than what you you know less than what the uh, market currently dictates. Under the under the guys that they're going to get full citizenship, and so I'm not trying to get all into the politics, but I hate this it. One, this was one of the, well, this is one of the things that Trump was trying to tell people about when and he, he was trying, trying to, to stop it. Well, he was trying to slow down immigration. Yeah, because you open up the markets like this, people from India. Let's let, let let's just say you want to be a database developer, and there's you got a job. The the, the, the average salary is like seventy five thousand. You got this dude over in India. And a lot of them are highly educated. Don't get it twisted, but they don't have opportunities that we got. And they all want to, a lot of them want to come to America. So they're like, well, I just go to America. You know, they're going to open the doors up. And, you know, now we got this influx of people and they're willing to do the job for like $50,000. So now you're trying to compete against a guy. You think you're going to get a job that's paying 75 and you're going up against a dude that's, that's willing to do it for 50. It has no problem, and it's cool with it. You know what I'm saying? So, certain areas they're going to drive the you know the uh, market down, and it's not just them. You got other people coming from other countries in China. But I mean, they, look, like I said, I'm not trying to get all to the politics, but a lot of this immigration stuff is just it's not just an aspect of illegals crossing the border. It's people coming from other countries who are trying to get opportunities in America, but they're willing to do the work way cheaper than what the market currently dictates that you should be paid right now. And then and when they, they get all that skill, then they're going to demand. That's when they can go and get the money, the, the high end bucks that you could have got on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. And OK, true to what do you say? Why do you think? Yep, and that's <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go bad. ahead. No, I was just going to say, and that's why um, um, me, I mean, guys <laughs> like me and G or whatever, and other guys that's out here trying to i mean because we i mean i ain't gonna lie i'm in the same boat me and g kind of hover around the manosphere you know what i'm saying we're not yeah, actually in the manosphere but we hover around it and we try to influence guys that are in the manosphere to come on come on and get into these tech fields so i guess what i wanted to say was that these people are coming over for your jobs that yeah, but you can get into. don't like computer dudes, man. Hoes don't like that, man. I got to get them hoes, man. Yeah, these jobs are for you, young black man that's 19 years old, fresh out of high school and trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. These jobs are out here and available, uh, especially, you know, in the IT field. You know what I'm saying? And you can make good money. So, uh, but go ahead. Uh, we're truth teller. Um, I know he's going to. Talk so crap about I, me. Well, I, I want to answer this question, Truth Tellers. It says, why do you think so many minorities show little to no interest in tech outside of the iPhone and Android device? I mean, it's a couple of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that they don't really have a lot of exposure to it beyond just the iPhone and the uh, Android, especially when you're talking about school age children or even some adults. Like, It's hard to fathom that there are some households that don't have access to the Internet. Like, it's, 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 it, you know, it's hard to fathom that, but it's a reality. So that's a factor. But then another factor is there's only like in the STEM in, in STEM and period, you know, whether you're a doctor, some type of scientist or a tech person, there's only like 7% black people in this field across the board. Right. And it's the same way within the tech. You don't really see a lot of us out there like that. You know what yeah. I mean? And so. If you're black and you don't see a bunch of black folks working in a certain arena, you know, as a uneducated person, I'm a, a uneducated, meaning that, you know, you don't have you're not really right. fully aware of what's going on with this. Right. 
you're probably going to think, well, this isn't something that black people really do. And in reality, we do. We're just not pumping and jumping in the numbers. And then there's another misconception where people think you need to be great at math to get into IT. Well, that's a yes and a no. The stuff that I teach, you don't have to ever really do math to get into IT. Now, if you want to become like a data scientist or a computer engineer, I'm talking about the person that actually builds and designs the motherboard, then yeah, you're going yeah. to have to do some math. Some serious but, math. You know, so it's, it's a whole bunch of misconceptions and a, and, a, and a lack of visual representation, I guess you could say, that I think plays into as to why some 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 black folks just don't really seem to grasp the concept of tech you know beyond the consumer tech aspect because you know when you're talking because you know you got some tech channels out there like marquise brownlee he got like 13 million subs that's my he's dude a, he's a great content creator makes a lot of money puts out very good content but he's a tech consumer person you know what i'm saying right i'm a tech professional meaning he talks about the tech from the aspect of what can this do, yada, yada, yada. Myself, keep it techie. We talk about the behind the scenes stuff that goes on on the motherboard and other places like that. So you just have a lot of it's a lot of I want to say confusion, but maybe a lot of misinformation to a certain extent. And that's where myself, keep it techie and others, because, you know, tech, just like he said, I don't consider myself part of the manosphere even though people claim I am part of the manosphere. And I, at this point, I really don't care. But, you know, I'm, I'm in these conversations, not because I want to necessarily just engage nonstop into the ratchetness, but I want to try to inject a sense of reality and urgency into it, especially when you start factoring in all these Indians finna come over here and come get your job or how automation is finna wreak havoc on your life once this 5G thing really starts rolling out. Because I don't think y'all really understand the uh, effects that 5G is going to really have once they get this thing fully figured out. Yeah, you know I mean? I'm, I'm, right? I mean, it's figured out to a certain extent, but once they really rev it up and roll it out to where you literally see, because you know where I live at in Florida, I live in Orlando. We got this area of Orlando called Lake Nona. It's like the, uh, this where the VA hospital is with a big one. And then it's like where a lot of doctors and stuff, they have buses that drive themselves around in a circle out there. You know what I'm saying? Like that technology is already out there. They, they, you know, they got like a little mile little thing going around, a little mile loop they go around. You just hop on the bus. There's nobody on the bus and it drives you around. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when they get that technology perfected to the point where you actually have driverless cars? Like all this stuff that, um, uh, what's his name? The dude that owns Tesla. Uh, what's his name? The, the billionaire guy? Mm -hmm. what's yeah. His name? Yeah, but whatever his name is, I can't think of it right now. Yeah, you know, he, yeah, he here, just moved to Austin. Well, yeah, he's out here talking about this year they're going to start doing trial runs on how to basically put chips in your brain. On yeah, they, he's I practicing on pigs. They're practicing on pigs. Yeah, Elon right Musk, now. that's his name. So all this stuff is coming down the pipe. Then you factor that in with automation. Everybody's worried about their jobs being taken because, look, they, got, they literally have robots out there that can flip hamburgers off. Like, look it up. There are robots in restaurants now that can flip and cook hamburgers. You you they see my video food. with the pizza with the robots that made the pizza? They have robots that can that are waiters that can deliver food to your table. I'm not, I'm not even making this crap up. Um, they got you work at a cashier store. When the last time y'all been to Walmart? How many cashiers do y'all notice working in there versus how many self you gotta scan yourself out? out. Exactly. You What's scan your own stuff? A self checkout machine is a computer. They don't need you. <laughs> you go scan your own crap. They got stores coming out like Amazon Go. Amazon Go, there's like probably about six of them in the country right now. It's a store where there are no employees other than the people who stock the shelves. You just walk in, grab your stuff, walk out, and then you know your stuff gets scanned on the way out, and you get your, your bank account gets charged. This is the this is the direction we're going. You know what I mean? And so if you don't know this stuff and understand this stuff. You know, you run the risk of getting left behind and then all these immigrants who want to come over here and, and, and pursue the American dream and they'll do the job for less. You know, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, chasing, listen, chasing hoes is cool. I get it. I did it when I was young, but at some point, something has yeah. to be more important. Than exactly. I wasn't crying about black women all day. <laughs> you need to get your life together, man. And it may not be tech. You might have to, you might want to go learn some stuff Nick talking about. It's just. I just know tech. I don't. I don't know every. I know. I know the military, and I know tech. Anything else outside of that, I'm. You know, I hardly know anything. You know what I mean? 
So these are things to think yeah, about. And Q, I, I, me personally, now, uh, uh, cause I'm a hardware guy. I don't think, I don't think at this current state that uh, Chromebook is powerful enough or its CPU have enough threads to run cause pocket cause each thing you do needs its own thread. It needs is because you got cores and threads in your CPU. Now this is where this is my shit. <laughs> you got cores and threads and each one takes his own. The, 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 it, think, think of it like this. You got a bucket of water. Wait, I got to do what well, since he picking on us, uh, keep it techie. You got a bucket of water. You got a bucket of water and you take the bucket and, and you put a hole in the middle of it. Now, eventually that water will drain out of that one hole uh, or you can make one big hole and it come out. But which one? But if you take that bucket and you make put four holes in the bottom of it, they can be smaller holes. <laughs> he got to shoot me the finger. They can be smaller holes, but you got four different streams. And, but, uh, but when it comes to, once you start getting, if you start getting serious, anybody can tell, you know, you're going to need a desktop eventually because you're, you're going in, you're getting the law of diminishing returns. I got some monster ass notebooks that we carry out to the field, monster notebooks and, you know, got uh, double uh, dual SSD hard drives, thirty two gig, you know, thirty two gigs of memory. All the in a, in in a and their 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 laptop. I said desktops. Their uh, laptops that we carry out in the field. A high end, super high end laptop. A mid range desktop will eat its lunch. So I mean, at, at once you get to a certain. Now I ain't saying that ain't bad to start, and plus. The mobile devices cost more. Y'all know this. $2,000 laptop. You know how much desktop computer you can build for $2,000? You know, you can build. The only thing you don't have. Uh, 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 <laughs> my buddy. And, uh, but, um, you had a question for keep it taking. No, he saw it. He, he, he saw the question. He laughed. He, he saw it. He said he'd deal with. <laughs> he said I'll deal with you after the show. But, uh, uh, but uh, after a while, desktop is king because there's only so much flexibility that you have on a laptop because everything everything is compromised as it is because it has to fit. But now you're trying to get everything that fits in a case this big into something that's thin and light that you can carry around. Now it can do it. Yes. But you're going to, you're going to have to give up something. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to give that, you know, to gain portability, you're going to have to give up some performance. Now let the guys at the, the guys at micro center, they're going to pump you up and all this other stuff and this and that and other, da, 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 and you'll end up with, uh, uh, something. Yes, I did. And I, we done it over the phone. I done like, dude, put the guy on the phone. Let me tell you what to tell him what to get. And I did. And I, I literally, he went to the computer store in Arizona and I, I, I done it over the phone with the guy and the guy like, man, who is this guy on the phone? You talking to hardware's my gig. That's, that's, that's my gig. Um, but you're going to have to give up something. If you're going to be serious, get a desktop. I mean, a, a lot of people get MacBook Pros. Them things are expensive. To do their video rendering and uploading and everything, you can make a BS computer with a, AM, with a Ryzen 3 or a Ryzen 5 with 16 gig of memory on a, on a, a, a B550 motherboard and cut your render time in half. With a T, with a 1050 Ti, with a uh, 1050 Gi, uh, 1050 Ti uh, GeForce uh, GPU, and you yeah. spent half the money, and you didn't cut your render time in half. Oh, just so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all those terms, all, all those, all those concepts you just said, I explain it on my channel. <laughs> yes, I you do, exactly and I, I, I watched, you know, I watched them videos. I, yeah. wa I watch your, I watch your, dude, I'm, and I, I watch your stuff. 
I watch I watch it a lot. Now I'm just even, saying because you know sometimes I know I still watch it. Sometimes we get to throwing around these acronyms and we just assume everybody understands what the heck we're talking about when we say it. So I'm like, well, if you're lost in the conversation on my channel, I actually walk you through what what is an SSD, HHD, GPU, CPU. Like, what does all that stuff stand for? How does it all mesh together to make a computer a computer? You know what I mean? So I actually I ain't with that Alexa that. shit, bro. This yeah. ring and that man, and you see this stuff now. They got that even Snoop Dogg doing this commercial about some doorbell thing with a camera, like people stealing the packages off your porch. Now look here. Somebody come up on G's porch uh, to, to steal, steal a package and you figure, because you think a thief, because the your little doorbell go, <laughs> that they ain't going to pick that package up. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm waiting on somebody to do that, look back at the camera and go, and hold the package up and walk away with it. What is it going to do? If it ain't shooting a laser beam out, you know what I'm saying? Or the, the tractor beam from Star Trek, you know, hold you to. I guess it's just supposed to uh, deter people. It's like when you walk into a store, you see a security camera. Yeah. You know, you can still steal some stuff, but, you know, most people. Yeah. Man, a lot of people that shoplifting in the stores, they yeah. know the cameras is there. They trying mm -hmm. to defeat the system. Yeah, but, but that's, that's but, point. Oh, no, bad. go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, but that's another reason I, I talk about Linux because um, they have a lot of open source software that you can install on a Raspberry Pi, which is, if you don't know what that is, it's a mini computer, a single board computer, uh, where you can do all this uh, home automation stuff, which is basically what you guys are talking about. The mm -hmm. Nest and all that stuff is all home automation. Uh, but they have software out there that will allow you to set up your own uh, personal security uh, service or you could put not the whole ring thing, but you can put um, sensors throughout your house that turn on and off your lights. You can actually talk to it just like Alexa. They have uh, software for that. So, and then record with video. So I'm sorry, y'all go ahead though. No, nah, nah, that's, 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 that's exactly what the stuff does. I think mm -hmm. the appeal to uh, ring doorbell and, and things of that, you know, ring doorbell, uh, you can get it to where all the videos are stored on their cloud. If you ever need mm -hmm. to access them, and then you can tie it into your local police department. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. know, if you build it yourself using your own equipment with the Raspberry Pi, I don't know. I don't know if you can uh, yeah. have service established with the police department if you want to call the, the police if somebody's mm -hmm. trying to bring it to your house. But with Ring, I know you can do that. So, but you know, all the stuff he's talking about, you can learn on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They they literally teach you all the stuff on now, YouTube. You gotta filter through the bullshit on YouTube because yeah, there's yeah. a lot of bullshit artists that's talking shit and they ain't get ain't bit more got a clue. I mean, I, but, I saw somebody said they want to learn how to build a desktop. There's like a gazillion videos on YouTube. Hell, you can watch one of my videos on building yeah. a desktop. And here, here's the thing, it's it's not complicated because you got videos from like kids as young as 12 years old walking you through computer builds how to build gaming systems, how to build, how to optimize your computer. If you want to be a, a live streamer, all this information is out there, man, on YouTube. Yep. Just go out there and watch these videos. You can, you'll be amazed at the stuff that you think is complicated until you see a 12 year old doing it. You're like, hold up. Why is this 12 year old doing it? I'm, I'm 30 years old. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know why kids can do it better than, than adults? It's a cognitive, it's a cognitive dissonance thing. I'm, we've all heard the phrase. I'm the old. I'm, I know I'm the old guy. Pure is the mind of a child. Children, like children, most children don't have a filter. Daddy, she's fat. You know you gotta be. You, gotta, you know what I mean? Hey, he stink. You know, kids, little kids don't have a filter. They haven't been painted with the right, wrong, left, right, pro, con conservative liberal stuff yet so it's easier for them oops it's easier for them to to uh um to do that stuff because kids is binary zeros and one they're off they're on 
off until they start. But then as you start growing up and girls start recognizing boys and boys start recognizing girls, that binary code then just gets scattered all the freaking <laughs> gets get but with little kids. You see, I see little kids sitting there with a tablet playing yeah. their game, doing a ABC, the EFG and all this other good stuff. But then you look at the big kid that's in the 11th grade doing his class online because of this COVID shit, and he can't concentrate. His hormones fucking with him. He thinking of his, he worrying about what his friends are gonna think about his new pair of sneakers that his parents got him. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't had I ain't got the fresh cut because the barbers they worrying about all kind of stuff like that. Six year old, seven year old, eight year old, they don't give a shit, you know, and they mm. this. And and not to go too far off the rail. That's why Star Wars even play that. What they say, because remember, Anakin, they it's like he's too old to become a Jedi. Because even though he was a little boy, they want him when they're little before they have all them preconceived notions of all that other stuff. It's easier for them, uh, is easier for them to absorb binary zeros and ones don't try to bend the spoon that's impossible only recognize the truth and what neo say what truth there is no spoon yeah. and you know because kids kids I, get it yeah and, and that, that's a, that's a great point because you know with any subject like let's just say you want to teach your child how to speak spanish if you can start training them how to speak Spanish by the time they're like three or four years old, they'll pick it up like a like 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 they came out the womb hearing it because their brains are still trying to make the connections and it's easier for them to uh, digest the information. Because, you know, with my son, he's six years old. He's had a smartphone in his face ever since he was like three years old. Now, it was initially we gave it to him as a means of distraction. Just yes. To yes. Entertain him. I've done the but same thing while he was doing it. He was learning how to use the phone at the same time to where now he knows how to use a laptop. He's six years old now. He knows how to use a laptop, iPhone. I mean, he knows how to do all this crap and hang up on you with the quickness. But <laughs> even though it's just a medium for entertainment, it's still developing an impression in his mind at a young age about technology to where if I started pushing him towards learning more about IT, he'll probably be more inclined to want to learn how this technology works on the back end. As compared to my oldest son, who's 15, when he was born, the, the iPhone wasn't out yet. The iPad wasn't out yet. So mm -hmm. we, we didn't have these gadgets to throw in his face like that. But so now it's a little bit more of a struggle with my, my oldest son. But I guess what I'm saying is when it comes to the babies out there, for those of you who might have kids and you want them to learn this stuff or whatever, introduce it to them as young as you can, whether regardless of if they have it at the school you can go to YouTube and introduce these concepts to them. You can you can go to YouTube. You can go. There's all types of resources out there, because like I say, this stuff is only going to become more and more ingrained in our society as as the days and and weeks and months progress. To where your kids are going to be having to deal with this. And like I say, you go to some of these affluent areas and whatever city you're living in, and go look at the curriculum that they're teaching their kids in these affluent schools. These kids are learning all types of STEM stuff. If you don't live in that area or you get, you live in one of these uh, the quote unquote black side of town with the black school and the black curriculum, like we all know the stereotypes about that. Dude, your kids are going to get left behind, man. But I don't want to say that to scare you, but this technology could be the great liberator or the great changer. If you know you learn how to use it and apply it, your kid or you can be the one that moves up and changes yeah. the direction of your family. You know, just by learning this stuff at an early age, you know? Yeah. And and I wanted to hit on that as well. Uh, I always make this statement because both of what you guys said, you know, this ties into what I what I typically say a lot of times that my son is 13 years old right now and he's taking programming classes. So that should put it in perspective. I is mean, he making beats. Uh, he making beats yeah. too, ain't he? He make yeah, beats. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he make beats with, with his dad. No. You got to do this, son. Nah, but um, they learning programming at a very young age now. And my son was going to school online before this pandemic, both of my sons. And uh, my oldest one, he just, in this grade, he just started a programming class and he took that, uh, that was one of his electives. Uh, so that lets you know, you know, um, that 
that's going to be kids coming out pretty soon that already have an understanding of of programming you yeah. know once they get out of high school i mean but i answer that question if you want to, oh go ahead no Jay. i don't know what it, i don't no, know i was just is. gonna say i was just gonna say look at mark zuckerberg the founder of facebook he was yeah. the youngest billionaire in the world at the time right he yeah. started facebook when he was like 22 23. Mark Zuckerberg been coding up computers since he was a, a preteen. Like if you go read his background, he had his dad was a, a dentist or something like that. Mm -hmm. He had coded up some communication thing for his dad's dentist office. And then that just, you know, led him into, you know, going to Harvard, dropping out and creating Facebook and all this other crap. But he was really young when he did that. He got introduced to it at an early age. And these tech people, a lot of the, I don't know if you notice this, but they're getting younger and younger. A lot of these tech gurus that you see coming out, they're not 40, 50 years old. These dudes are like teenagers and, and in their 20s, man, out there dominating. So why can't your kid be the next one? Why can't your kid yep. develop the next app that, you know, when it when it, when it goes on the stock market and it opens up as an IPO, you know, they become an instant billionaire like the people who made Snapchat. Or why can't they invent the next program that a company like Google comes out and buys for $4 billion? Like, like the the two college kids who made YouTube. In case you guys don't know the history of YouTube, mm -hmm. it was started by like two 20 year olds in college who just made a website out of boredom because they wanted to make some videos. Uh, Google came around and bought them out for like two, three billion dollars. And now look at how YouTube is now. So why can't your kid be it? We used to and, use Mosaic back in the day when I was a youth. We used Mosaic. And then uh, what's her name? K KJ Mighty said, I envy the kids learning the code so early you know coding might become like uh learning a language like like you're taking spanish when i was in high school i had to take a spanish class it might get to the point where because you know coding you're literally learning a language you're literally learning how to talk to a computer in a certain language the same principles at the end of the day apply for when you're trying to learn spanish french or some other language uh, other language or whatever so you can learn it too what what is jenkins i don't know what that now is. It's um, I, and I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I have taken a course on it. <laughs> but it was one of those courses that I took that I was forced to take, and I didn't retain the information on it. Uh, and I believe that ties to automation, uh, because I, they forced us to take this course on a course on Jenkins, and a course on, damn, I forgot the other one. Um. It's some automation tool. Um, so I'm assuming that's that's tied to automation. Uh, I can look it up right fast for you, though. But I've yeah, never heard of it. That's it's, way it's, beyond my scope. Yeah, it's something that's that's it's a new uh, application that uh, is used. I, b I believe it's used for automation. Um, because I, I had to take it for my for my position. For some reason, they they forced us to take these these courses on. But they do have a course on Udemy because um, they I have a my company. And that's one thing about jobs. Once you start working in the IT field, uh, depending on the positions, you want to leverage the company uh, to pay for courses for you. Uh, so you don't have to pay for those courses out of pocket. A lot of companies, they'll, they'll, uh, they yeah. want to help you with continued education. So they'll pay for certifications. They'll pay for, you know, all these training courses. Like yeah, my company just your got contract, a, you ain't going to finish here and leave yeah. two months later and take my money down the road. Yeah. And, That's, um, I mean, yeah, like my company, they have a business Udemy account. So I log in under my business account or my my using my work email and I have access to all the courses for free. So I don't have to pay for for a course. Yeah. And Ansible is what I was thinking about. Yep. I've I've done a video on Ansible. Uh, Jenkins is pretty much the same exact thing. It's an automation tool since he he's saying that it is similar to Ansible. But I do know Ansible and Chef is as well. So I've been out of server maintenance so long. It'll probably take me about four or five months <laughs> to get my ass back in, you know, get my ass. Okay, look, dude, Firewire was just coming in when oh, I mean, yeah. it was <laughs> dial up. Email was still dial up when I was doing server maintenance. Well, but the, the, everybody tell me all the old guys, they tell me it's a lot easier than what it was than when I was in. They said they thought they like, dude, 
you will be, do better because we done it the hard way. He said, now they tell me it's a lot easier, you know what I mean, than, than what it was um, when I was working at TX Connect, which was an ISP. They were one of the biggest ISPs in Central Texas. That's where I used to work. No, but that was a long time ago. I just got a, I just got out of army, and I was on a a, a, a reserve and an inactive ready reserve at the same time. So I was, I was um, uh, uh, back and forth, back and forth. But I, that's how, I, but that's how I made my bones. Yeah, but I never heard of Jenkins. I really haven't. But yeah, they're coming I, out with a lot of stuff that that's to to kind of push and develop. Uh, software applications all that stuff man i had to uh, go automated way i had to go one of my guy he was um uh he got a he had a dental oral surgery and whatnot and i forgot i had a job lined up for him so i had to do it myself i couldn't push it on nobody else and i had to deliver these um battery powered their pallet jacks you know that they use in warehouses and whatnot right and uh, north of san antonio it's um, uh, uh, b- right before a town, uh, a city called New Braunfels. It's a giant Walmart distribution center. And I had to deliver them for it because that's, that's how we butter our bread. When the towing's slow, we deliver equipment. And I, had, I took four of them uh, battery-powered pallet jacks up there because I guess they want battery power because you're inside fumes and stuff. G, I'm 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 at the load dock and I unload them and guy signed the paperwork and he give it to me and he said, Hey, well, you gotta take this. You see that that little that little office thing in the middle of the floor right there? Yeah, he said, but you stay on the yellow line and go there. They're gonna give you a number so you can get paid when you get to the thing they send you online, and that's how y'all get paid. I said, Okay, yeah, cool. So I walk over there. And I uh, knock on the uh, guy, the guy he on the phone, and he and I just hold the paper up, and he you know do like you know like come inside, and he talking on the phone, and I'm just standing there, and I look, and you couldn't see it from until you came in. He got two racks, two racks, and it's ice cold in there because I guess you know I know we got to keep him you know keep him cool, and I'm looking at these right, and I'm looking hot swap bay, hot swap bay, hot swap bay, hot swap bay, God. Look at this shit, Cisco, then a router, then another router, Cisco. And I'm looking, in the, and then he get off the phone, and I said, hey, how you doing? He said, yeah, and I just pointed like, you know, acting, you know, playing down. And I just, he said, that was the system that controls the conveyor belt system in the warehouse, in the Walmart distribution center. So they know where every box is, wow. what box is going on the conveyor, and what truck and trailer is going in? Yeah. There's a camera yeah. at each dock, and then look at the screens. He got six computer monitors there. I said, "What's the little red dots?" He said, "Those are the forklifts." He said, yeah. "That so I know where the the forklifts are in the warehouse." The yellow. I said, "Yeah, those are the yard mules." He said, "How you know?" I said, "Cause I passed them on the way in, <laughs> and whatnot, and look, yeah. and I'm looking at." Somebody got to maintain that thing. Yeah, exactly. Somebody yeah. had to design mm-hmm. that thing. That was the first time I went and I went into that. Because, see, I get to go to a lot of places. People, oh, y'all just deliver equipment. Yeah, 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 whatever. They don't know. I designed my our dispatch software, <laughs> they, but they don't need to know that. Yeah, I mean. But you should have seen yeah. this thing, man. It's badass. Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing about these warehouses, man. These, these aren't no Rudy Poot operations anymore. I mean, you guys want to go on Amazon and then get your package delivered the next day. That's not just because you got a bunch of people in there shuffling packages all over the place manually. You got some very highly sophisticated equipment in there that tracks all these packages to make sure that package gets from that shelf to your destination in a timely manner, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? It's IT people running that stuff. So you'll hear about people saying they need to pay Amazon workers more than $15 an hour. There are plenty of people that work for Amazon that get paid more than $15 yeah, an hour. Plenty. <laughs> Especially the people that you know are in charge of the, the IT stuff to make sure that those packages can get at your door in a timely manner. So there's it, a lot of stuff going on out there, man. I mean, this isn't, isn't restricted to that. I remember when I first moved back down to Florida, I got 
I got an interview for a job lottery department, right? They were actually going to hire me. And um, they had they wanted me to work at this warehouse that every lottery ticket that came that that uh, that was in the state of Florida had to pass through this warehouse where I, where I was going to get work where I was going to be working at before it got sent out to all the gas stations across the entire state. So <laughs> they had me in charge of like two billion dollars worth of damn lottery tickets, and I had to go in there. Part of my job, if I if I had accepted the job, was to make sure all the conveyor belts are running, all the computer systems that you know, do with the conveyor belts and when these things are moving across the lines, the security systems, the cameras, you know, it was, it was like they were going to hire me to basically just set up a whole defense perimeter around this thing and maintain it also that people can go out there and get their scratch off tickets and, you know, <laughs> and hope they win the Powerball or something yeah, like the lottery is big business. But it's big just the business. technology behind it that, mm -hmm. you know, nobody sees. Right. Like, like I said with the Amazon, you know, this it's a lot that goes into it, man. And they pay big bucks for that stuff. Yeah, from it's your screen good. to their server to who has this, you know, USB drive that you're looking for, the closest warehouse that got it to you so they can keep their shipping costs down, their packaging costs down, their transfer, because they got to buy diesel too, just like and, I do. And it's and not whatnot. just... Yeah. And it's not and it's not just that. So, like I said earlier, IT is ingrained in everything. And somebody IMQ just just mentioned it. He said something about electronic medical records. Well, you know, you go to the doctor, you get a boo boo, you get sick. They're not keeping this stuff in filing cabinets. It's all on computers, databases and servers. You guys love some Bitcoin out there. Everybody's jumping up and down over Bitcoin. Do You know what Bitcoin is at the end of the day? Bitcoin is cryptography. Cryptography yep. is a component of IT on how to encrypt information. Yep. You know, Crypto blockchain, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff is technology driven. All of your information, you got credit cards out there, they're sitting on a database somewhere. You got bank accounts out there, it's sitting on like how many of y'all carry cash? How many of y'all are paying for stuff with your debit card or you're using a NFC, near field communication, which is basically you're paying for stuff with your phone by waving your phone in front of a, a little receiving device. Mm -hmm. That's all that's all IT. Somebody has to build that stuff, maintain it, design it, implement it, run it, and protect it. That's where the cybersecurity part comes in because you don't want somebody breaking into a server or some type of system that all of a sudden they leaked your bank account information and now somebody can just go on a shopping spree. Like Somebody has to get paid to protect that stuff, man, and they pay big bucks for this stuff. Hmm. Lots Remember of the money. Wells Fargo hack? What was that, about a year or so ago? Well, it's all kind of hacked was all the time. Easy, But- you know, you know, and the tide is into the manosphere. What's what's one of the most popular topics in the in the in the black manosphere? High value men, right? Yes. Every, everybody talks about high value men. You got to be a six figure dude. It you can be there in like three years. <laughs> you, can be, you can be a so called high value man in like three years. You know, doing maybe even less, doing some cybersecurity or some net. You know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I tell people I wear a t shirt. I tell so I guess I'm high value because let me see. I wear blue jeans, steel toe boots, and yeah. wear safety orange, uh, uh safe safety color shirts. But I tell and whatnot, and drive trucks and impound yard, and but still got to do video and photography for accident scenes and all this other stuff. But uh, but I that's right. But I don't wear a suit. So yeah, I'm a six figure guy, <laughs> but I don't wear a suit. So I guess I don't count. And I need a shave. Man, I need a shave. But y'all got beards. I don't wear a beard. I got I, shave. I stopped shaving the day I got out the army, bro. You did? <laughs> well, I, 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 I shaved once a week. When I was in, but I was like. Yeah, I, I, I shaved once a week. I ain't even. I wore a, a, my little baby Hitler mustache for like two or three years. Once I made E5, you couldn't tell me shit. But then after I made E6, I just cut it all off in E7. I was same thing. I was complete. I just shaved my even my hair grows. I mean, as fast as I cut it, it grow. But it you wouldn't know it the way I always cut kept my hair down to to nothing. Cause the more rank you make, the less time you have to do shit. Man, made E7. I ain't had time to do nothing. So I'm I ain't got time to be maintaining no hair. I just shh, shh, that that's it. And, then, and let, let's go. Clothes in the BDUs and the cleaners. I ain't got time to do no laundry. I pick pick eight of them up, drop eight of them off. I, I ain't got, you know, E7. I ain't got time for that stuff. Anything else y'all want to add? Y'all got the floor. Uh, anything y'all want to add that y'all want personal or something or something we missed or something y'all think you might want to look at this or you might want to look at that 
or something like that before uh, before we get out of here? What well, one thing I I heard uh, a lot of people talking uh, about the AWS right course. Oh my bad. Hello. No, go ahead, man. Oh, right. can y'all hear me? Oh, no, nah, you good. Um, what? No, nah, what I was gonna say. What I seen a couple people asking about the AWS course, so I was just gonna hop in and just tell you I've I've actually taken the one by the Linux Foundation, which is uh, it's a good course, and basically all they teaching is um, is really how to set up the servers on uh amazon's mm -hmm. uh uh network or whatever so i mean it just walks you through creating an account and then it walks you through setting it up and then kind of close to the end it goes through and talks about the pricing and all that stuff and how to network them and and just different stuff so that that's somebody was asking uh, is it good and did it have what what information does it cover so i just wanted to kind of explain that and then also what you said earlier uh nick about the warehouse stuff uh i wanted to bring up that i mm -hmm. remember walking through walmart one time uh and now it now they have a machine that goes down each lane in the in the on and scans the shelf for the amount of product that's left on the shelf. You know how it used to be yes, uh, a, a and it supervisor. Got a it used to, and it yeah. moved real slow and beat beat. Yeah. 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 It used to be a supervisor, you know, that would go through with the little scan um a gun and scan everything on the shelf and count how many is in there and put it in there. Now they have a machine that actually does that automatically. So uh when you when you brought up that um the warehouse thing, how how a lot of stuff is automated. They're trying to automate pretty much everything when it comes to a lot of this stuff, man. Uh, with anything, you know, dealing with uh, these type of companies that are out here. So, um, and it was one other thing I think I seen. Um, oh, I was gonna tell Tech G earlier uh, that I actually uh, pay my <laughs> pay my sons to go through your videos. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I pay him in you um get money from him. Yeah. Yeah, I pay him um I pay him in uh rope because they play Roblox or whatever all the time. And so I get them some Robux when they complete a uh and and you know you can look in their watch history and they show me their watch history and uh as they going through your videos. So I just wanted to key you that oh. and give you a shout out, man. They they going through your courses and cause I, I watch a lot of them and it's it's broken down to the level where anybody can learn it so if you guys want to get into it go hit up tech g uh technology g go to his website you know because the, the courses are in detroit the courses are great now. yeah the courses are great and that'll help you get into that field um and it was an that was it but go ahead <laughs> yeah bon bonnie t that watches that's my that's my niece <laughs> I'm outed her now. She ain't want nobody, but I know ain't nobody good. But that's my niece. She watches your videos, G. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's, that's actually that's actually uh, a good idea. I, I, I might have to make my son start doing that. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get my older son to get him in the IT. You know, he's right now. We're going through the uh, 14, soon to be 15 year old teenage blues with him. But whatever. But um, yeah, you know, with my channel though, man. Um. Now, cause I'll just go ahead and wrap it up. But, you know, Tech G is the channel. The website is technologyg.com. But um, what, what Keep It Techie said is the aim was to actually create these courses, entry level courses, like just bare bones, entry level courses. But I want to create them in such a way that it's easily digestible, easily understood to where you can literally put a, a middle school student in front of it and they can learn and understand the concepts. And that, that was the, that's the aim, because. I've taken other courses here and there or when I had to learn IT and, you know, you know, here's the reality. You can go buy a book on IT, but these books be like five, six hundred plus pages long. Very dry reading material. You'll probably fall asleep in the first paragraph. And so <laughs> most people aren't going to read that stuff. Or you can go pay for a class on Udemy or go to a tech college. They're probably going to like I say, my experiences when I used to teach. You know, especially in the military, it was a lot of instructors. They talked above the comprehension level of the students. And that was kind of one of the things that used to irk me because I'm like, look, dude, you have to talk at a language that they can understand and comprehend this stuff. So basically, when I started the YouTube channel, that was one of my goals was how how can I explain these concepts in such a simplistic manner 
that is not going above the general audience's head, but they can still take the knowledge and go past a certification with it. Because, you know, you know, so it's, it's kind of a, a little fine balance that I've had to, you know, try to create. And, you know, it's been working so far. I mean, you know, I've been getting results. And like I say, I post all the screenshots every time somebody sends me a message, an email, or in a comment saying they passed a cert from what I've taught, I post it in the community tab to serve as proof that, you know, I'm actually, you know, people are actually getting something in real time. And um, somebody, that, uh, unsunken one, he asked a question about can these certs be uh, something, uh, are they recognized across state lines? Uh, most of these certs are recognized globally. So you don't have to worry about state lines. They're globally right Oh, okay. The ones Good. that I teach, you know, the A-plus stuff, uh, CompTIA stuff, I should say, uh -huh. they're, they're globally recognized. So you're not going to have any issues in that department. If they want, you know, but and I talk about that stuff on the channel. But um, so, but Man, like I say, Pakistani's going to be a problem here in the next 10 years. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be a problem. They're going to be a real problem. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, overall, man, Tech G is, is the YouTube channel and the matching website is Technology G. And my focus is just entry level certification. I'm not I'm not really going above and beyond because, you know, I'll be there forever. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to stick to the entry level stuff. And then if you want to you know, get some higher level stuff, you know, that's what keep it techie and others come into play. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Nola. <laughs> the ghost of Nola. Oh, man. And I, I keep forgetting to tell Sly, man, I'm not from New Orleans. I keep saying that. I told him that in the chat a couple of times. I was like, man, I'm not from New Orleans. And somebody going to call me out by y'all saying that all the time. <laughs> I'm saying I'm from New Orleans because most people, when you meet somebody, well, since you know, since I've left home, uh -huh. uh, everybody I meet, uh, and I'm pretty sure you, I mean, you guys have met people from Louisiana. The first thing most people say is, oh, you from New Orleans? <laughs> and and I'm not from New Orleans. Yeah, you listen to the Rouge. folks in Bossier but, City? I go to Bossier City a couple of times a month. They don't mm -hmm. sound. Yeah, it's, it's they don't it's sound the same. The people in Bossier City, Shreveport, they don't sound like the folks in New Orleans. They don't. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a different. It's a totally different culture. Like, for instance, we all sound country down there, but the people in New Orleans have their own dialect. You can yeah. tell somebody from New Orleans yes. versus somebody from outside of New Orleans. Like uh, Sean Corder, I can hear that that accent. I know that accent up from anywhere. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> they got they got their own distinct dialect when it comes to you know the way they talk or whatever. You know. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all right. But Let's nah, go. I'm, go I'm, I'm, I'm. Let me, let me, yeah, let me just uh say this one thing. But uh, if you guys want to, you know, learn Linux, anybody out there, and I, and I didn't want to kind of take away from Tech G because I was on that on on here a couple of days ago. You know what I'm saying? I wanted him to, you know, kind of push push his stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I've already talked about me. But if you guys are interested in learning Linux. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, head on over to my channel. I talk about the Linux operating system, different applications that can be installed on on the Linux operating system, as well as, you know, just different. I mean, applications that you can use to um, that are free and open source and free as in like freedom and as well as monetary. Uh, so you can you know, create something great using the Linux operating system for free. Like how I do all my videos, all my videos are done on Linux. Uh, I have a editing software that's, that's, you don't have to pay for similar. That's close to Adobe, you know, creative cloud or whatever creative suite is free though, you know, and I do all my editing on this software. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I try to push it so people don't have to, you know, create a whole bunch of overhead if they're trying to create something or if they want to create a, you know, a YouTube channel and they want to do upload videos like Man, what Tech G does. You know, it's free. So I think Adobe ain't Adobe Reader or something like that. It's going away. Uh, what's uh, that? Uh, it's a Adobe. Oh, God. It's something in Adobe. Like it, it, it does the animation on your website oh, too much. Oh, oh flash oh. yeah this is talking about uh yeah because i keep getting a notification yeah the flash player is going away and for you to download it i mean remove it from your 
computer system that, you know, there's all the security fixes and upgrades and everything is going away. So I'm like, I so that has all, something to do with HTML5. Yeah. So I'm like, so all these websites got sure. Adobe based animation on it. So what? So once they kill that, they're just, it's just going to crash. I mean, what? Uh, uh, yeah, they retired flash. Okay. They retired flash. Okay. So, you know what I mean? I mean, what, mm. what's that all about? I think it's because the browser, I mean, something is either with the browser or maybe, you know, I don't know. Tay G. Do you know? Uh, I, don't know. I, I mean, I know it's I know it's going away if it hasn't gone away. I don't know exactly how that's going to impact the websites because um, I, I, I don't I don't know. You know I mean, you probably have to ask a, a programmer or a coder. They they might be able to give you that because I think Sean Carter, he's in the chat right now. I think he's a programmer coder. He could probably answer that question better than any of us. Yeah, because nah, I he's know. I tell you right. I know I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know I don't know. I ain't even gonna act like I know. But uh well if that's all y'all got update flash player is history now. Yeah, but I mean but so uh, I mean what 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 can you use to replace it? You don't need flash for animations anymore. So it just Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sean Carter, he's a uh, yeah, you might want to if you want to talk about programming Sean Carter, I know he uh he makes videos. He subbed to my channel. I think we follow each other on Twitter too, but he knows a lot about programming. So if you want to have the programming element, you know, well, I want to link up. <laughs> Sean, you got to hit me up. You got to hit me up and we'll get you. I'll get you up here then. And then I can go off completely and just leave y'all free up here to feed my folks. <laughs> and y'all just give me a call when it's time for me to come back and turn the computer off. Because I mean, because I am not a programmer. I don't know anything, uh, but I know I know enough. I know enough to get in trouble, if you know what I mean. I know enough to get started. Then I got to call somebody else and they get me over the, the loop. You know, they help push me over the wall. That's at the obstacle course in basic training. I'm good now until I get to the next obstacle where I need some. You know what I mean? Then they pull my ass over. Actually started learning to code after listening to G. I'll be damned. There you go. I it's didn't even know that. <laughs> huh? I didn't know that. I thought he knew about coding. I didn't know. I didn't know I inspired him. Well, that's Sweet all dude. right. The, hey, man. Yo, but Sean Corte is, is in like. everything, though. I seen him he, doing stocks a while back, too. Yeah. I mean, he, he he's well versed in a lot of different areas. You know, I follow him on Twitter, too. And uh, he follows me as well. You know, I, this is the stuff. Ahead. This is the stuff I like because I'm I was thinking about doing another channel where it's just stuff like this mm -hmm. you know what i mean it is it, it, it's it's stuff like this and just make it i ain't made up my mind yet because i don't have a lot of time um i'm surprised i'm sitting still now what what a covet thing got shit so stuff so slow but i'm quite sure it if once it go back to normal i'm you know my time is gonna be even less, but I figure while I got this time, I may as well use it and try to help, even help myself and help others around me. Because you know you got people watching from the clouds. Because I got, I got 16, 16 people on the screen, but I got I had forty some, but I got thirty four watching. So you know you got people, mm -hmm. you know the way they say they watching from the clouds, as they say, yeah. right? So they watching, they're just not participating. But uh, I appreciate you, gentlemen. Sub to both channels. That's what I'm talking about. All right, gentlemen. Well, shoot. Uh, any close last words? I'm gonna I'm gonna close shop. I really appreciate both of you guys bringing the knowledge and and stuff and willing to do so uh, to to pass this knowledge on to other people and pass it on to myself. And uh, I really appreciate both y'all. And that's why I'm sub to both y'all channels too. <laughs> and uh. And uh, and I, I I really appreciate it. And any last words before we shut it down? No, nah, man. man. Just, you know, I appreciate being up on here, Big Sarge. You know, salute to Nick. Thanks, I, bro. Doing, doing the doing the damn thing. Appreciate that, bro. Hey, you yeah. got it, bro. But man, I don't I don't I only ask people that I I got people, and I ain't no diss, no cap. 
But some people ask me about something. I'm, eh, that's not a subject I want to. And, you know, but yeah, but there are certain folks I know I ain't got to worry about no foolishness. And y'all two of them. OK, because there's only there's only six people I'll, I'll actually do this with. And y'all two of the six. Y'all always welcome on, on, over here for whatever. Appreciate and you got my you got my support on whatever you want to do. All right. Appreciate it. Nate. All right, y'all. Well, bye, y'all. Thanks, everybody, for showing up and, and picking the brains of these two guys, which ain't nothing because they just, hey, when y'all, when we turn off the screen, they faces go and they robots under there. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're bots. <laughs> Got little transistors and whatnot and everything. Y'all be good. Peace. All right. Peace.